Brother, my brother, my friend, Herbie Miller. <laughs> How are you doing, sir? Boy, Herbie, I, you know, I, wish, I wish you weren't near. <laughs> you probably not figure it out. <laughs> you know. Once I had a serious presentation at NYU. Yes. And I turned up with everything, man. This was in the early days of doing AV presentations. Mm hmm. Not that thing work, and I had to be painting pictures <laughs> with words. With words, <laughs> look here, no man of all the mornings, of all the mornings, because you know, big a laugh after me on the one that I don't play from the computer and I don't dare, and, and, and he's always teasing me. Sometimes I need to put myself into the digital age in a serious kind of way. No, I always play from a computer, but this morning, you know, it's going to be all computer because of my special guest. That, uh, Herbie, I, 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 I invite you to hang around and listen to the radio because we got a special guest coming in at 7. Well, I'll be listening to the radio at 11. There you go. There you go. Because, um, all right, so, so, so I need a thing. And then when you hear my special guest, you're going to know why I need a thing. <laughs> so we think we're trying to sort it. So how you doing, Herbie? <laughs> it's so good, you know. Yes, great. <laughs> It was uh, not um, had much to complain about. Great, great, great. I hope everything good apart from the technical difficulties. I hope everything good on the north coast end. On this side, it's a beautiful morning and we're seeing beauty. You know, there's a poet, I mean, I remember as who said, those who find ugly meaning in beautiful things are corrupt. And um, so I'm finding beautiful meanings in beautiful things. There you go. Yeah. So, Herbie, um... Last week, of course, uh, well, for, for, for listeners who, who, who didn't hear the last two weeks, it's the 11th annual groundation. This happens every February um, for 11 years now. The Jamaica Music Museum, under the directorship of Herbie Miller, um, has been organizing, presenting, uh, producing the, the groundation series. And we've gone two already, Herbie. We've been through the first two. So far, so good. Mm -hmm. External, great vibes music popping it all off in the afternoon, mm -hmm. following some very deep and um, thought-provoking conversations. Mm -hmm. um, as usual, give, give us a, a, a recap in a minute of last week's discussion, which included uh, Lekim Samaj, I recall. Uh, and, uh, yes. mm -hmm. uh, well, first of all, George Davis was stuck somewhere in the Carolinas. Mm. Uh, able to make it as a moderator, but of course your sister in Elaine went stepped up. Mm -hmm. and the brilliant, and brilliant. Something else. She just, she just hit the ball out of the park. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good um, to hear. Lake was there, being Lake him very mm -hmm. much in tune with what's going on, linking it to the contemporary and um, ex expressing how all of that ties into the past. Mm -hmm. Um, our brethren Clint and Hutton mm -hmm. talking deep education reconstruction in terms of who we are, what we are could be doing to change the whole vibe of our nation. And uh, Donna Hope, you know, Donna is so steep again in youth culture and so on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the, uh, and of course, our good friend Cordell Green. Mm -hmm. Man, I tell you, mm -hmm. it was almost like matching mismatched people who all match. Yes, yes. Because on the surface it, surface, it would seem as if, uh, wow, there's going to be some kind of disagreement. But in the whole presentation, mm -hmm. people understood, you know, especially Cordell's position, which is keeping the music clean, keeping the music proper, mm -hmm. which was echoed by um, Lakeim, you know, Lakeim, is the kind of man with a sound system who only played uplifting music. Yes, and yes. that was anchored by both Clinton and Donna. So it was a wonderful <laughs> Yeah, You know, interestingly, you know, I was um, reading uh, last night about something that Bob Marley said um, over Simmer Down. I, 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 I don't know if you... You, you you have that, that bit of a story, but yeah, sure, I'm sure you do, where he talked about what Simadon was about, that it, 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 it was written for two reasons. One was Simadon to the rude boy era that, had, that, that, that seemed to have been overtaken the music at that time. So he was saying Simadon to the youth them, 
and hold your, hold your temper, etc. Uh, but and, and then and, and so, so that was critical. Although it was also to his mother who um, was a bit angry with him for, for not 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 what's it not traveling to America, not traveling uh, or going to live with her, or something to that effect. And I thought, wow. So 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 the rude boy era with that that period that was ushered into um, ushered in the bad boy ism and business into the music. Um, all the way from when? From the 60s, Herbie? Yes, um, the late 60s, coming out of the introduction of political violence in the early 60s. Mm-hmm. The rude boy culture really took over. And the, the, the song Simadon is pretty clear. Simadon, you're licking too hot. Simadon, yes. soon you'll get dropped. Mm-hmm. Simadon, you hear what I say, and so on. Mm-hmm. But it does not have as some people say, we are not going to all these uh, who are uh, we, we boy songs that are encouraging we boy. I've mm-hmm. heard a lot of things. For example, Bunny Red one called Who They Come From Jail for Who They Get Deal. Mm-hmm. And we know a lot of our youth to, to this day must be the, the, the star of being seen as a bad boy, we boy. Mm-hmm. And many have gone to jail and sat there. They have sat there for decades, uh, only to be proven in a sense. Mm-hmm. So that was also saying the, the youth go jail, but the youth get bail and yes, out. yes. Uh, and then one had to look at the, the period, the oppression, and so on, yeah. and, and and really to to revisit the history. Um, because what is history and who's telling it? So, 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 and, and I mentioned that because of uh, you know just something you said um, of keeping the music clean and and and, and that th- those th- the challenges we're facing in 2023 within the music um, these are not these are not um, it, it, they're they're deep and systemic uh, and so then how it, it takes a bit of Sankofa ing to go back to the past to retrieve that which we have lost you know. Um, uh, and 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 I think it's it's to to change it in any way, we're gonna have to have a frank discussion yes. of where this is coming from. Past. Yes, of the past. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. So, Herbie, what's on today? Today we have Simon Crossgill, mm-hmm. our moderator. We have Mikey Witter, mm-hmm. Wayne Chen, Pat Chen, and Paul Burke. But I noticed that not every and people are involved in a, in a not what you do. Herbie is all that. It's all that. No, no, nobody from Ari you know, can moderate, can talk, can. Uh, Herbie, what can I, what can I situation this? Eh? You are on like, time of day. When you do get off, you can't make it in on time. But I'm not alone here, Ari. I used to no, be, be gay after. I used to be gay coming out, right? Especially, especially this program. Yes. You, know, you call it running African, but I call it flying African. Well, there you go. We're flying, man. Sure. But, um, <laughs> the, the, the topic today is yes. running from Jamaica. Oh, well, see that? Yes. yes. Capitalism, socialism, and the Cold War politics. Okay, to hold it right there, let me take a quick break and come back. I believe in a Jamaica with no guns. I believe in a safer Jamaica for you and me. The time brought to you by the office of the Prime Minister is... Now, 6.45, uh, we're inside of the Africa Forum. It's Running African. Director, curator of the Jamaica Music Museum, Herbie Miller, is online. And we're talking about the... 11th annual Groundation Series. It's happening again today at the Jamaica Music Museum. And uh, so today's topic, within the general theme of sound and society, 60 years of music, political activism and social change, and if you hear a little sound in the background, this is an engineer and, and, and other situation trying to fix it, the, 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 the issues that we're having. Um, so so, so pardon, pardon us. I, I know you can hear us clearly. All right, so Herbie, um, running from Jamaica... During that period, of course, many of us who have been around for some time realize how many of the uh, upper top of people, as we would say, were leaving Jamaica, especially mm-hmm. business people, Chinese and brown white people in particular, mm-hmm. and uh, how difficult it was in that period. And a few of the artists, Ernest Smith, as we fight our, um, among ourselves. For the, the power country. and the glory. 
Jack, Jack Kingdom Kingdom goes to waste. Plutus, Plutus song, I man born and I know I leave you. And the and the meditation song, all who running from Jamaica make sure it's forever. Yet all three of those artists left Jamaica, ironically. And um I was hoping to have at least one of them on to discuss that, but none of them were available having been booked for other gigs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But the music reflected that. And on the flip side, there are other songs. Struggle Martin, for example, singing My Leader Barney and I Now Leave You. Mm-hmm. Showing that there are those of us who understood the social change that the, the, the society was going through, trying to equal, make people equal rather than strappers. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, decided we'd stick with it for better or for worse. Yes. Right? The conversation being had right now is it was it for better or for worse? Mm-hmm. I think people are more mm-hmm. able to look back and talk about that period. Mm-hmm. It was a, 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 a really a guidepost to the future. Yes, which way we would end up. Wow, you know, that sounds like that day. sounds. Yes, go ahead, Irby. Sorry. Yes, in every in every phase of our lives, you know. Yes. That, that point, for example, that. As Jacob Miller said, tired for lick weed in a gully, tired for lick it in a bush. That Rastafari could come forward. And I, I, I guess we could listen to weed as coming out, not to lick weed or to lick weed alone, but to just come out as Rasta without being brutalized, as happened in Car Gardens, or bulldoze, as happened in Bacca Wall, and, you know, but to all that kind of stuff about Black Heart Man. Yes. That General, but to yes. take a minimum full place in society, which Rastafari did and continues to do. Mm-hmm. Wow, as usual, wow. Uh, I hope that you know we get a chance to for those who don't make it that they'll get a chance to listen to somewhere where they can go in. Uh, and I hope why we never stream these live. It is being streamed. It is being streamed. Oh, my bad. To have said that, yes, that I was, I didn't know, and still don't know what to say about streaming. But <laughs> go to Institute of Jamaica, yes, YouTube website, yes, and I, and later today I will try and get the proper details after you. I'll just text it to you, yes, and then you can um, broadcast it to our, our brethren and sister in yes, outside of Kingston, who might find it a little bit challenging challenging, you know, school is mm-hmm. tomorrow, the kids must be dealt with the rice and peace and stuff off a cook. So, yes. we understand. Yes, but yes. In the article, we have the support. All right. Brilliant. So, uh, it starts at what time? At 2 p.m. Institute of Jamaica, the lecture hall, and um, Institute of Jamaica is located at East Street at the corner of Tower Street. Mm-hmm. And for parking, for uh, our, our guests at the Myers, Fletcher, and Gordon parking lot. They have been very kind to us over the years. And um, so there's no reason not to turn up if you're able to. And, 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 and you know, we have to give thanks to media houses. I FM. Leave it right there. <laughs> because pe- because you're getting me in trouble every Sunday morning. <laughs> right, I'm saying you're getting me in trouble every Sunday morning, I'm afraid, Herbie. Right? So you left it right there, sir. So, Herbie. I leave it right there, but they know what we are saying. Exactly. So, thanks to all the media houses, right? <laughs> If it's me alone, you know, it's good for me. But, Herbie, thank you so much. But before you go, right, I want to ask you a question. Because as a, as a musicologist and a music historian, uh, if, if the history of Jamaica's music is to be written, name me at least five. Let me make it good, better for you. Name me at least five people who you cannot leave out or else it's not the history of Jamaican music. I mean, no, I'll put you on the spot, but let's see. All right. Yeah. You cannot leave out, first of all, unknown. I wouldn't even say unknown. People like Watto King, mm-hmm. um, et cetera, who were hand drummers of the poor period. Mm-hmm. They set the tone for Count Ozzy. Right. Who you can't leave out. Right. Uh, 
but in the mentor, there is Lord Free. Okay. Can't leave out that man. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Ska, let's not say the Scatolite, and in particular, Dan Drummond. Just stop right there, so now because you left with somebody. Anyway, go on, go on, go on. So, and Derek Morgan. Uh, and and, and what, about uh, the, what about the music, the musician, okay, Arena? So the reggae period, you have Scratch Perry, among yeah. others. Yeah. Uh, the Wailers. Mm-hmm. Rocksteady period, Ken Good, Alton, Hectones, mm-hmm. Reggae, Here Comes the Wailers Again, mm-hmm. so many others, Fly and Rabbit, and yes. into the modern era, the dance period, or we can't even call it the young Yeah, well, leave today. it for a minute, leave it for a minute. Look at my guest, look at my special guest coming in. No, I am totally over the moon. This is my uncle. I call him Uncle Ernie. Uncle Ernie. Yeah. Uncle Ernie. Welcome, <laughs> Uncle Ernie. Look here, my mistake from the mic. All on the little car. Uh, Uncle Ernie. The mic open, you know, Uncle Ernie. That's why I miss, me, me can't come forward. Oh, Uncle hey. Ernie. Yeah. Oh, my full of goose people. Look here. <laughs> Uncle Ernie. Oh, no. I'm going to cry. Uncle, how you doing, Uncle Ernie? Yeah? How you doing? Oh. Holding on. Oh, oh. <laughs> All right, have a seat right there. Are we talking soon? Okay. Look who has come in the morning before the sun come up. Look who has come. Look who has come. <laughs> I'm not hearing you because I'm not sitting down yet. You know, um, uh, Ernest Wrangling. One of those who be what I am. Ernest Ranglin, the man, the music, the legend, the icon, is in the house. What a time for him to come in when you're on on the phone lines, Harvey. Oh yes. Yes, yes. because you went to the scatterlights right now. I remember, I mean, I tell you, if I pull up, look like the scatterlights, you know, because I hear you, you know, because you were right there. Uh, <laughs> when, when I say that period, Ranglin was yes. a part of that, you know. Yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. There are some people who. You, you, you talk to them, you talk about them mm-hmm. as a subject. You don't lump them into True. a topic. Exactly. I totally they agree with you. They deserve their own couple of hours yes. of looking at who they are. And that is why... And, them into and you know, you're so, you're so right. Um, that is why um, Ernie Wrangling is here from 7 until 10 o'clock this morning. A true professional, always on time. Yes, always on time. So management there with him? Dale is in the house. Dale Howsome is in the house. And we're going to go to the... Hold on. Nobody now here. Herbie, well, we can't talk over the whole of my program. Okay, hold on. Let me turn on some microphone. Okay. Let me put, let me put Uncle Ernie on and Dale House on before the time because you are, you are insisting that I do that. Uncle Ernie Wrangling, um, Herbie Miller on the phone line saying hello. Dale, um, Ernie's, um, Herbie's on the phone line. Yeah. Herbie. Um, Herbie Miller. Hmm? Herbie Miller. Herbie, Herbie Miller. Herbie, Herbie Miller. Oh, must say el- Miller. Yeah, he must say hello. Oh, yes. Herbie Miller. Uh-huh. Yeah. You can't talk yeah. to him. No, just talk to him. He's, oh, he's, he's, yeah. He's just getting his headphone and, and so on to together. To yes, and the is here doing a, a, a brilliant yeah. job. To well, Look here. He oh, doesn't know you're on the line because this is a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. You will have in the house someone who's given to Jamaica so much Nathalia. and who was still giving. No. Yes. Indeed, he called a few months before going up to Florida to spend his little time as he mm-hmm. said he had to do his medics and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, um, what he had to say, I won't say. Now there will be an appropriate yeah, time for yes. him to up why he called me. Yes, yes. And so you know, yes. Go on, Herbie. Yeah, as your guest, I am tuned in and I'm not letting go until I have to. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that does that mean that you you want to stay on the line? No, it's up to you. Up no, to man, you stay on the line. Look at Herbie. I'm, I can't st- stay on. Yes, um, we're I'm going to talk to Dean Fraser line. at. At, at um, 8 o'clock, and we're talking with Maurice Gordon at um, 8.35. So, so you just hang on on the line there, Herbie. It's quite fine. Um, so to me, this is a historic moment. This is a historic morning. And um, I'm, I'm honored just to have Ernie Wrangling um, sitting in the studio. 
next um, to to Dale Halsam, and we're talking about Dean and Maurice and Herbie Miller, all in the same breath. And this is why I my, my problem with the the uh, this, the technical issues in the studio this morning is greater than it even appears because the guns of Navarone is what I was about to start with this morning, and then I had trained to Scavel, and all of that is all lined up on those computers. We have Toots on the Major's 5446, the Melodians, Rivers of Babylon. I think I probably can find that elsewhere, and Archie. Archie, I want to say thanks to Maurice Gordon for reminding us about Archie. Archie Herbie, you remember that song? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, um, and, uh, so, so all of that, and, uh, and, and we're waiting on the engineer to come in to, to help us so we can, we can get all of those music play. I know that Dale has some um, with him, but this is uh, the situation that we're facing, even while we have um, Dr. The Honorable Ernest Ernie Wanglin. The man, the music, the legend, the icon. One thing about uh, Ernie Wranglin is that if you listen to the Africa Forum, you know that I play Ernie Wranglin every Sunday morning. Not one track or two tracks, but sometimes all five. Sometimes it's just every bit of it is just all Ernie Wranglin. And I always say, the greatest guitarist of all time. Now, I know that I also say that with Jimi Hendrix, so I mean it for both of them. <laughs> there is, it is what it is. It, it's Ernie and it is, it is Jimi. And, and, and I am not making no distinction of who's great and who's not. To me, they're both the greatest guitarists of all time. I say that without apology, and when I play, I do that. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. Come forward um, into the conversation with Dr. The Honorable... Ernie Wanglin, the man, the music, the legend, the icon. BKB, awesome meals and tastes. You're awesome. You deserve awesome tastes. The time by Burger King taste rules your way is now uh, two minutes going up to seven o'clock. You're inside of the Africa Forum. It is running African in the house with us, as I told you before. Ernest Wanglin, Doctor the Honorable. Ernie Wranglin. A lot can be said about Ernie Wranglin, and we're going to hear all of that this morning. Uh, I invented the music, but not the word. And even reggae. I didn't invent that word either, but I invented the music from Ernie Wranglin himself. And he's right. The history of Jamaica's music cannot be written without Dr. The Honorable Ernie Wranglin. Here in Jamaica, it is something that our young people need to know. It is something that we all need to know and respect. But sometimes we also forget our history. Ernie Wranglin represents a foundation of rhythms of Jamaica's musical heritage. He has timeless relevance and enduring legacy. He's in the house this morning. Ernie Wanglin's music forms the soundtrack of our lives and sometimes the soundtracks of our programs like mine. I'll be discussing, I'll be interviewing the highest in terms of the social status or those who we look down upon, the invisible people, who, when they come into space, Ernie Wanglin becomes a soundtrack. And so today we're privileged and we're honored to be in the presence of the man. Some might even say the myth. The man, the music, the legend, the icon, a musical polymath. Out of Robins Hall, Manchester, right here in Jamaica. <laughs> Think about that. Ernest Wrangling, Daddy, Uncle Ernie. Welcome once again. Thank you so much for coming in this morning. So we're going to get the microphone close to, to, to that. Uh, and move this from here for me, please. Um, we're doing all kinds of things right now because I need to see um, Uncle Ernie. All right, and we're getting the microphone uh, it, it, to, to him in a way so that... And we want to talk about Ernie in a way, you know, because Ernie was born June 19, 1932. And if you check that, there is a need to check that. Because he's in the house, walked in, sprightly, 
looking like 65 <laughs> and sitting in the studio. Welcome, Uncle Ernie. Hello, thank you very much. It's an honor to be here also. It's an honor to have you in the studio. This is a great honor. Um, you... This to me is like a reunion because I remember the early days of Irie FM, that you were one of the first musicians that I met and that I interviewed you on this program and every other program that I did, I found reasons to interview you. And so we'll be having many, many discussions over time. The last conversation we had on the phone lines, it was a few years ago, <laughs> I called you to say, Uncle Ernie, we need to put on a guitar festival. And you said to me, yes, go ahead and see how we can pull this together. And we tried, but there was no sponsorship. And I'm still saying, in your name, we need to put on a guitar festival. But let us start at the beginning. Because you started out very early as a musician, as a guitarist. Tell me about those early days and how you started. Uh, when you were about 15, I think, or, or even earlier than 15. Well, um, I'm really, uh, I didn't go to any big... Um, university and so forth to to do my music. I'm a self-taught person. Mm -hmm. I, I used to go to Badman College, but um, I, well, I went there to, to, to do, um, I, I, I had the ambition of being a lawyer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I went into the Cambridge to, to Cambridge here to study, you know. Ah. But um, I'm always a lover of cricket. Mm -hmm. And um, in the evening times, um, I used to go to Badman College and yes. the, um, the, the area, they didn't have any playground, you know. So I generally have to go to other places and have a little enjoyment before I go home. Yes. But um, someone from my college always go and report on me, and because I can never remember to take off my epaulet off my shoulder, <laughs> <laughs> so they, they could have, um, there's a big recognition. Yes. <laughs> and um, so uh, when I go back to school the next day, a hundred lines. And every every time, you know, and it developed to about a couple thousand lines. You were punished. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yes. I think I couldn't really take it anymore, you know. Yes. And um, and there was one one little thing about the Cambridge um, lessons. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't like to remember too much names, you know, because, and this uh, this person, there and that, you know. Okay, and, yes. And names and dates. Yes, that was <laughs> one part that, yes. I, that I didn't like too much. Yeah. So that was one thing that helped me to, to, to just, when I was 14, I decided that this is it, you know. I, I'm, I, I taught myself from a young fellow mm -hmm. about four, uh, four years old up. you taught yourself yes the, the, to play the guitar yes uh, uh, from from you your, and you're playing from four years old yes because yes. my uncles they used to um, play the guitar also mm -hmm. but um they didn't know much about it also they just know a few few little cards. But you were growing up around the guitar. Yes. And, yes. Um, so um, I watched them when they practice, but they never allowed me to, to touch the guitar. Uh. So whenever they go gone to work, I would <laughs> steal a little <laughs> You're play. strumming on the, on yeah. the chords. <laughs> and then I um, yeah. run back, run the strings all the over down, you know, uh, and take it out of tune again and put it down so they would know that someone had so you was could, you, troubling the instrument. So you could also tune it? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Anyway, that's how I started. And yes. 
uh, all my life I've been teaching myself and um, I don't mind it when I really mm. come to the end of it because yes. I, uh, you know, it's good. Yeah. At one point, you were also uh, a, a, a little later, still uh, no, probably a teenager. You were renting guitars. Yes, yes. W- were you, you rent- were renting? You were did- renting guitars. Eh? You did- had to rent a guitar. Right, because we we we. Oh were- yes, oh yes, yes. Yes. Um, I I used to do that, and um, I didn't. Uh, it when I started to play. In a band now, that's when I decided I, I, mm-hmm. I was still renting guitars. Yes. But eventually I managed to, you know, I went to Haiti. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was the first band, uh, Eric Dean's band. Uh huh. And I, w- I went to Haiti with that band. And yes. uh, when I came back, I could buy a, a guitar, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. that's where I started on my own fully. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. The, it, it, this is this is quite your, your your start is quite an interesting story um, because you you also learned the notes. In other words, you could read the notes um, at some point because you you were taught. So talk to us about that because you you taught yourself to play the guitar and then later on you were able to read the musical notes. Yeah. Right. Well, yes, um, reading the music, that's another trick of it, you mm-hmm. know. Um, there was one a violinist, I can't remember his name now. Tommy Tomlins. Eh? Tommy. 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 Uh, Yes, Tommy Tomlins. Yes, yes, that's the man. Yes, oh, you know, I like him. <laughs> <laughs> little man, little. Yes, yeah. yes, he was the first one who taught me to 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 read. Yeah, um, you know, and from there, I when I got the, the books now to start to real study the the, the real thing now mm-hmm. I would take up saxophone books. Wow. Yeah, all kind of books, you know, and that uh, because I needed to get the ex the experience. And um I but he was the man who really helped me to Yes. Uh, he, and and what's interesting about this is that so it, it, it's it, it's the, the notes because these are universal. So it, you know, it's, it's saxophone, it's violin, it's so on. It's, it's not it's not a guitarist, yeah. um, Tony, t- Tommy, as you said, a, a violinist um, who who first taught you, and then you read, um, studied on your own by buying the books and so on. Um, so who were some of the the people that influenced you musically? Who were some of the people you were listening to? Because now we're talking about the forties. Oh well. Um, to begin with, um, I was in the Eric Dean's band. You know, I started off in Val Bennett band. Yes, Val and, and then I went to Colony Club. But the great influence that I got at um, Colony Club was that um, there were the artists that came there. They they used to have um, like. Uh, one artist would come for a week mm-hmm. and, you know, they change artists, you know, and um, there they, they were people who do, uh, did a lot of um, Broadway music and so forth. Mm-hmm. And um, and Eric Deans, too, the music that he used to play for the band, it was really whatever those big bands, mm, you know. The big band uh, sound. All of them, yes. um, we would we would get their music sheets mm-hmm. and we played the same thing. Yes. So this was a great op- 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 opportunity for mm-hmm. me. Yeah. So, and um, and these artists now from who, that come from um, Broadway with these, but I get to learn all these Broadway tunes. And this was a great lesson for me. Mm-hmm, this was mm-hmm. a good schooling. Yes, the foundation. <laughs> so it, it's interesting because at this time we're not talking about Jama- J- a Jamaican sound or Jamaican music. We're talking about a more international sound, more more American sound. Yes. So, so at that time, 
the Jamaican sound had not yet been developed. Yeah. Right. So we want we want to talk about that. Yeah. Um But 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 you mentioned your your own quintet. May. You 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 were touring. You said with Eric Deans, but at some point you you started um, in the mid nineteen fifty eight. You're playing on the north coast in the hotels. Yeah, you were playing on the north coast in the hotels with your own band. Oh yes, yes. Yes. Well, like on the north coast, um, I I was with Baba Mota. That was uh, was a great Jamaican musician also. And he had a nice, a uh, very good combo. Mm. And that gave me a lot of opportunity to, because I came out of the big band. The big band have all these trumpet saxophones, mm-hmm. whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And now this is only piano, bass, guitar, and drums. Yes. And this was, you know, the way I could um, ex. Um, ex- get a lot of exposure, mm-hmm. you know, because I, I have the opportunity to feature yes. to myself a lot. Yes, yes. And um, I think these are the things that help me to to really uh, improve. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. away from that, too, I used to listen to a lot of great musicians from from abroad, mm-hmm. you know, and these I try to f- figure what they are doing mm-hmm. and um, try to do my best to understand what 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 it is. Mm-hmm. And this is these are the things that help me a lot. Yes, because I, I I know when I've had this discussion with you before, where you talk about those those mis- some of those you you listen to like um, Doggett, I think, and. Um, Hawkins, Erskine Hawkins, and, Hawkins. And, and and Benny Goodman. Benny Goodman. Yes. Oh, Benny Goodman and, and Hawkins. Yeah. Hawkins. Uh, uh, Coleman Hawkins. Yes. People like that. Yes. Oh yes. So all these people, because um, I I try to um, get in touch, uh, get you know um, with all these great musicians. Mm-hmm. I never had the opportunity to play with them, yes. but I listened to their records, or if I could find any music that they do, I try to, you know, yeah. read it and understand what is happening. Mm-hmm. And um, this is how, uh, because it's a fight I had to do, because it's just a self-taught person, you yes, have to yes. go through a whole lot of... I can just imagine, it's, and I can just imagine the great love you had for the guitar. It was my father who played the guitar, who introduced me to you originally when we were children, because he used to be on the veranda just strumming out one beat. Menge, 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 menge. And <laughs> that's all he used to play. And, and, but, but he talked a lot about you, you see. And this is so we knew about you long, long, long before we could even talk. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, tell me about your relationship with Les Paul. Oh yes, um, I was. I at that time now. I, you know, as I said, I was with Eric Deans. Yes, and um, we, we have been to Haiti a few times, and then um, after he came back. Um, I was with um, Bob, Baba Moto for a while, mm-hmm. and then Eric went to Nassau, yes. and then I went with with his band to into Nassau, and this was where I had my first opportunity to be an arranger. So I arranged my little tune, yes. and uh, you know the band for the band, and yes. this is where. You know, you get the, the the real feeling and gusta, you know, mm-hmm. to do mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. thing, you yes. know. And um, I'm very glad that I went there because I got a lot of exposure. And then um, Les Paul and Mary Ford mm-hmm. was, uh, came along during my stay there. Mm-hmm. And um, we met and... We had a very good, you know, um, 
to, togetherness together mm. um, and and eventually decide to come to Jamaica. So um, when I was at Glass Bucket in Halfway Tree, he came and looked for me. He spent a whole week. Wow. And um, wow. it was, it was very good because um, the, there were certain things that he wanted to, 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 to know because he's a guitar player like myself. Yes, this is a man, whose name, this be, a man whose name is on the guitar. Yeah. yeah <laughs> yes. He, he's supposed to be the number one guitar player at that time, mm-hmm, you know, so. Mm-hmm. And there are little points and um, he had a little problem with his fingers, one, one of his... So he wanted to see if, if if he could get through that. And we became very good friends from there, you mm-hmm. know, and mm-hmm. he's one of my good old friends. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. What, what a rich story. What a, what a beautiful, rich story. We're speaking with... Dr. The Honorable Ernest Ernie Wanglin. I call him Uncle Ernie and leave it at that. The man, the music, the legend, the icon. Going to take a quick break. All right, we're back with you inside of the Africa Forum. It is running Africa. And I'm just going to tell you straight up because I, I, I'm a very honest person in this spot that I'm just having straight goose pimples all morning and it's just not stopping. My hair me, me, me is standing up on my head on all kinds of something. Because we have in the studio with us the man, the music, the legend, the icon, um, the, the, the story and the history of Jamaica's music cannot be written, will not be written, in any way without Ernie Wrangling. Any history or story of Jamaica's music that is written without Ernie Wrangling is unfinished. Flawed. It is flawed. Herbie, you're saying it is flawed. Without Ernie in that history, it would be simply flawed. It would be simply flawed. There's no, that's yes. like rapping about West Indies cricket without Gary Sobers. There you go. Don't get around these kinds of icons. There you go. And and we heard him mention just now uh, Les Paul. Uh, Les Paul is critical to this discussion in a way because as we heard, that relationship that um, Ernie Wrangling developed with Les Paul, um, who gave him his first guitar, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, Herbie, as a musicologist, how, how do you contextualize this? Les Paul and Mirror Ford were seminal to the development of um, American popular music. Les Paul was not just a guitarist, but also <clears throat> a sound engineer who is credited with introducing stereophonic sound. Mm-hmm. But um, as far as Ernest is concerned, I recall Les sure. Paul, yeah. up to his 90s, he died close to 100, if not 100, mm-hmm. would perform every Monday night at serious clubs. Mm-hmm. And he did there for years and years. Mm-hmm. And each time Ernie Ranglin was in town, of course, he would go by and so. And Let's Ball would simply get up out of the guitar chair, hand Ernie the guitar, and let him loose. <laughs> that was the level of respect yes. that yes. Ernie had. Yes. When yes. Ernie skipped to New York, guitarists would turn out. Yes. I recall a night at a jazz club when Ernest's guitar was malfunctioning and um, George Benson was in the audience. He left the club, drove to Jersey, back to Manhattan with a guitar for Ernest to perform. Mm-hmm. That's the level of uh, respect yes. that Ernest had and continues to have among jazz uh, uh, people. Of okay. course, and we want to get to that side of Ernie because, um, uh, Uncle Ernie, when we talk about jazz, but I first want to talk about your, um, your meeting uh, Chris Blackwell and, and the performances um, that happened in Montego Bay at the Half Moon. Because you, what I find, um, uh, 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 Ernie, Uncle Ernie, is that you, you are 
you represent a continuity through or you're not hearing me too well or let me turn this yeah, up come, more all right let me but let me speak directly into the microphone and we fix your your headphone properly all right we, we, all right so you you were there at the beginning of, of of the jamaican sound but before that happened there was a process and i want to talk about that first meeting with the young man who was what was he he was a lifeguard or something at the half moon hotel that's chris blackwell what was his work at the half moon hotel when he when, when he saw you when he saw you there what was chris blackwell work at half moon mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh chris yes chris blackwell yeah well um i this time i was at um baba motor mm -hmm. in montego bay and um i then, uh, oh yes, I left. Um, I left from Baba Motel School, and then I went to Half Moon at um, the uh, what these people name. Anyway, uh, <laughs> sometimes I'm um, getting too young here. Yes, you know, I, so I, and I'm trying to remember. The names trouble. Yes, I'm, I'm going to get a name yeah. for you now. Wait, oh, yeah. Yes, I just yes. remember yeah. Delisa. Oh. Those are the people. Okay, those yeah. are, yes. And um, Chris, um, Chris Blackwell, um, his family, he's their family also. And um, he came there and he decided to do a, an album with, you know, there was a, a gentleman from one of those islands. Um, the, the, that's the I think it's the Bahamas. Was it the Bahamas or Bermuda? Lance, uh, we're talking about Haywood. Lance Haywood. Yeah. Lance Haywood. Lance Haywood. Yes, Lance yes. Haywood. Yes. Yes. Uh, and um, they decided, I think they gave me one or two tunes on the album. That was my first start. Yes. And then from there, I... Got my own. I got to do my own albums yes. with Chris, and and you I, know that first album that you did, and that was also I think Chris Blackwell's first yeah. release on Island Records. Right. Um, that album with you and Lance Hayward and his orchestra. But, yeah. but what I find interesting about that is that, th I mean, this is the, at, at least I, I, obviously Lance Hayward was the was was a name. Um, Ernie Wrangling um was 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 a was a newer person was coming in younger youth was coming in, but your sound was so sharp and crisp and and to the soul. On that album, I listened to the whole. I want to play the album this morning, and the computer won't allow me. <laughs> um, you know that album. Everybody should get a copy of that album. That 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 first Lance Haywood with Ernie Wrangling yeah. um, album that was put out um, in the 1950s. I think it was 1959. Right. Yes. Ah, it's beautiful. It reminds me. What it does for me, right, is that it takes me back to like childhood cooking. Like Sunday cooking when you when you are three years old, you, I, I, I remember the time you know when I was very young, just listening. So yeah. that was the first one um, put out by Chris Blackwell. But after that, um, then, then Chris, you you began you, you put out another another album with with Chris Blackwell. Oh yes. Um, talk to us about that. was that the one that was called um, Guitar in Earnest? Was that? Yeah, I think it was. Yes. Um Yes, I think that's uh, that's it. Uh, because I did about the first at Half Moon. Yes. Uh, I think I did two albums with him at Half Moon. Right, right. And that was one of them. Yes. That that was my first featured yes. uh, featured album. Yes, it's, it's you know it's brilliant. Yeah. It's brilliant, you know, Uncle Ernie. Uh, it's also there for me to play. But I just have to say, Dale and to Herbie. That the ancestors will not allow me to play those <laughs> today <laughs> because they want time to, for us to talk to Ernie. Yeah. And um, I think people will find them. We'll talk about them and uh, ask our listeners to go find them, please. Post them, if buy them on Spotify, et cetera, et cetera, and then and, and so on. Um, but, but find the albums because especially a, a guitar in earnest... Um, it's another one, and while my guitar seems sweetly weeps kind of situation, it's really brilliant, yeah. brilliant. All yeah. right, so so, so th I want to um, come up now because I, I see Uncle Ernie, I see you coming through time, right, with the music and carrying the music and redefining the music. Uh -huh. But there came a time when there was a Sunday meeting 
that change the music. And this is why I say you cannot write or talk about Jamaican music without talking about Ernie Wrangling. And <laughs> this is why when you said you might not have named it, but you created the music, yeah. you are on point. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Do you remember what I'm talking about? Yeah. Let, let us talk about that creation of the music and that Sunday meeting yeah. with Cox and Dad. Eh? The, the, the Sunday meeting with Cox and Dad. In Cox, huh? yeah. Yes, that change oh, there, that where change, you were asked to change, change the music. sound. Eh? Because Cox and Dad at some point, yes, go ahead, Dale. And, you and, and, were asked to change the sound. To develop eh? a Jamaican sound. To develop a Jamaican sound. You're in Cox and Dad. Oh, 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 yes. Um, well, um, with, uh, with Cox and um, uh, he... Well, he was a, 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 what would I say, um, he had a very good ear for music. And he, I think he was, used to choose the best of tunes in those times, yes. you know. And um, so he, whatever, he, whatever I would have to play, I would have to play something that could really make him, you know, Yes. Uh, get him excited then. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, I know what you're talking I about. I have done a lot for that studio. Yes. Because that's where he started. And uh, I think I was one of the first person to really bring that studio up to a certain uh, standard. Yes, and, and I don't know how much you recall, uh, Uncle Ernie, and, and if you don't, then we'll talk about it, the, the Sunday meeting when, when Cox and Dad came to you and um, who else was there? I, I, I remember their names. To say, listen, I, the, the, the Americanized sound, uh, and you have told that story many times, so I'm just jogging your memory, um, it, 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 that I didn't, I wanted, uh, he said he wanted a more Jamaican sound, and he called you in as the arranger um, working with Studio One yeah. along with others, and I think the Scatterlights came out of that also, yeah. and, you, and, and said, um, give me a new sound, another sound, and it was a meeting that happened on Sunday. Cox and Dad has, has talked about it. It's written into the history, and you are the first one who told us about it. But So let me remind you of it. So, uh, and, and, and that's where you... Um, well, I'm not a musicologist, so maybe er, um, Herbie can help us, or maybe Dale can help us. To, to what happened with the with the sound then to develop the music that we now call ska? Huh? Yeah. How how did we come to develop that music that we how now call we ska? I don't know if you have that story. You know that history, Herbie. How could we develop? How did we develop ska? How did we develop ska? That's Sunday, oh, that's Sunday oh, oh, meeting. Yes, that's yeah. Sunday meeting is what I want to talk about. Uh, yes, yeah. go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I'm getting yeah. a little. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, uh, well, um, the, 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 uh, to get that sound, um, we, 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 we um, Cox is a man, uh, dad is his name. Yes. And um, he, had, he was a man who, you you would you have to admire for his good hearing of you know mm -hmm. and to mm -hmm. his choice of, of of music that he would really mm -hmm. love and he could hear what he wants you know yes. but the only thing he cannot play <laughs> so so he had yes. to have somebody who communicate who could communicate with him yes. And luckily, I don't know how good I was, but anyway, I you was there good. with him. Yes, yes, you were very good. <laughs> I, I think, um, Herbie, that we need to bring the Sunday meeting into the, into the public space. Dale, do you know about the Sunday meeting? No, I know really not about the Sunday meeting. Yeah, I think it's very significant for Jamaica's history. Yeah, I think uh, what, 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 um, I, when uh, I watch, Pull the microphone to your close. When, when I watch the interview with... Um, yes. Mr. Rangbin, um, I think the, the change the, the, from, from the rhythm and blues, the way they put the, 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 the beats and stuff like that. Yes. So, Mr. Rangbin, wh huh? what you want to know, how did you change the rhythm and blues to scare? Yes. Uh, uh, from blues, oh. Yeah, from rhythm and yeah, blues to well, scare. Well, uh, the thing, that's, this is the thing that um, we, 
it, it, it got the idea. And uh, this is where, I, as I said before, Coxon had a very good um, uh, yeah. ear. Yeah. And um, he loved the music a lot. And he could he could do, um, he could really try to get what he wants, but he cannot play it. So he needed somebody who could communicate with him. Yes, yes. And this is where... Um, we got this thing together, mm-hmm. and um, this is where the ska came in. Yes. And um, so we were the first people who did the ska. Right. And uh, um, well, I, we ska uh, at at, at um, um, Studio One, we really uh, were the first people in doing a few things. You yes, know. and I want to come back and talk about um, the days at Studio One yeah. and, and, and some of the creative... And because, as you said, a yeah. lot of firsts came out of Studio One yes. and you were an integral part of all of them, yeah. um, being, being, being an arranger and, and a guitarist. Let, let me take a quick break and come back. Yeah. Right, we're back with you inside of the Africa Forum. It is Running Africa. And so, Dean Fraser, if you see your phone ringing, is us. But we're not, we're not quite ready. We just want to make sure you understand. And by uh, we're getting a, a, a voicemail from you, but you're scheduled to be on at eight, so I can imagine that you're probably not answering right now. But uh, Dean Fraser is a weird caller. All right, um, Uncle Ernie, Daddy Ernie, the, the, the Honorable Ernest Ernie Wrangling, the man, the music, the legend, the icon, um, foundation rhythms of Jamaica's musical heritage come from uh, um, Ernie Wrangling. We talk about his timeless relevance, we talk about his enduring legacy, we talk about how his music is a soundtrack of our lives. Um, we are talking about a career spanning some 76 years and probably more. One of the most influential guitarists in the history of popular music in the same pantheon with with Jimi Hendrix, um, hands down, no apologies. It, 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 it is it is what it is. All right, so um, uh, we're back with with, with Ernie Wranglin. Um Dale Halsam is in the studio. Just in case you're wondering which Dale we're talking about, because we never properly introduced <laughs> you know Dale. We're so excited. Haslam. Uh, Haslam, sorry, Haslam. Dale Haslam is in the studio. Dale, mm. um, tell us about your um, how you met, because you're a young man. Yeah. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. You're a musician. You're a guitarist. Tell us about how you met um, Ernie Wrangling. Um, I started out. I come from country, Brownstone. Yes. You know, and, but when I came out serious on the north coast, um, in the hotels, I there was a friend of mine heard of, heard that Mr. Wrangling needs a bass player, mm-hmm. and he brought me to Mr. Wrangling. That time I couldn't really play much. Yes. You know, but um, from I meet Mr. Wrangling, he's like a father from then, and he's the first one who brought me on tour. What year was that when you met him? Um, about 97. Or 96 Whoa. around that time. That was the year before he went in search of the rhythm. Yeah. So you were in search of the rhythm with him in, 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 in no, Senegal? No, I didn't go, but I know, I, I know of the journey. Yeah, yeah, we're going to talk about it later. Yeah, but um, yes. he, 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 my first trip with him was to Af- um, Cayman, then Barbados, and then England. A lot of places we got to travel together. Wow. And um, he, he might not have sit down and show me stuff on the guitar, but just the way he, he talked to me, I can I know how to improvise. He teach me the method of improvisation. Mm. You know, it's a big skill to, you know, big honor to have that. So it's like a father to me from that time until now. I'm still learning. The Bible says you can be jealous after good things. Yes. I'm a good, you're bad, bad, bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm fortunate, you know. You know yes. yeah, I think I'm one of the only person they probably let in them space. And them house, my name, wife. Yes. I'm happy for that because they, they taught me a lot of things about how to develop yourself as a young man. They, you yes. know, they're very, very nice people. Yes. You know, I learned a lot of things from them. If you look, they change my view about life to be to be successful. Right, so know. it's a holistic... Yeah, uh, and you say, yeah. um, my uncle is your father. Definitely. You're easy. <laughs> <laughs> I can, you know, for real. I'm a big, a big, big thing, though, you know? A big thing. Yeah, um, all right, so uh, and tell us about Dale, the, the, the guitarist, the musician. Because there's a lot about you. You're a teacher also. Yes, at yes. State Town Academy. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I started from country, Brownstone, Barefoot, so yeah, Barefoot was school. Yes. You know what I mean? Them I, days, I, eh? I find some, my, my mother never have it, so I me, me went to learn a trade, mm-hmm. mechanic. Yes. And then the music, you know, I, I fall in love with music, and from my fall, I never started in church. 
Then I um I have an uncle who um brought me in his band. Then from there, you know, um, I came to the North Coast, mm-hmm. started playing in the hotels, and then from there. I met up with Ernie, then I met up with Desi Jones. Yes. And I started working with Desi Jones yes. over the years, with Jimmy Cliff. Wow. All over, a lot of artists. And finally, um, I'm, I'm the band leader for Richie Spice. Mm-hmm. You know, and I still work with Ernie. So with that, I said I wanted something more. So I went back to school. Mm-hmm. And I started and I went to Edna Man and I graduated as valedictorian. Wow. And then I left in 2020 and started yes. teaching at Steer Town. And this year, we last year, yeah, we had um, the four top C6 students mm-hmm. in music in the island and the top in the Caribbean. Yeah. And this is Stuart Town Academy. This is the Stuart Town Academy that the Jamaica cannot understand because, yeah, you're, in, understand. because you're in Stuart Town and you're excellent. All of, and it's not all of a sudden. No. It takes time because here we have Dale, who is one of the prot- is a protege of Dr. The Honorable Ernie Wranglin. Mm-hmm who is teaching at Stuart Town Academy, who took how many students to... to uh, um, the, top the, students? Yeah, the, the first year I, um, when I, I taught them, um, I, got, I got second and fourth in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. And this year I have the fourth top in Jamaica. Last, mm-hmm. year, last year and then the, the top in the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. But to do that, it was it's, it's lessons from Ernie. I use the same methods, I don't, I, you know, because t- the students, they, really, they, they don't see the future. Yes. So we'll be there, grand market night, we run line, Sunday mm-hmm. night, mm-hmm. Ev- after school, there till eight o'clock sometimes mm-hmm. I say students mm-hmm. sometimes I remember the girl you know she she's at Edna mm-hmm. I lock her in the room all day grill it <laughs> and say you have to practice she cry yes. oh. but the success of the, what, yes. all the, what they receive they know they can see the journey what yes. I was talking to them about so it's like when you used to talk to me about the road is going to be rough yes. but the success I'm having now yes. is through the kind of encouragement I'm get from earning them and I want to, to, to put a um, note to Benny right here, so, mm-hmm. that um, Stuart Town Academy is a school that has been doing very well. And Stuart Town Academy has been devalued and demonized in the media because the people who are covering that story don't understand what's happening when you have people like Adele in, the, in, in, the, in, 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 in that classroom. Right, getting those top Caribbean grades. Mm-hmm. You don't understand that, but if it was another Kingston school, you'd have been good with it and the coverage would have mm-hmm. been different. So, done with it already. We're talking about the influence of Dr. the Honorable Ernest Wranglin through his protege at Stuart Town Academy getting these top grades. Understand the context, and this is why journalism in Jamaica needs to be called out on many levels, even when we are writing the history and the story of Jamaica's music. Understand the Sunday meeting. Every single journalist must know about this Sunday meeting in 1959. One Sunday morning in 1959, when bass player Chloe J. Johnson and Ernie Wranglin were asked by Cox and Dodd in a surprisingly formal manner to meet him at the liquor store that he ran in Love Lane. And Cox and Dad told the two masters, I need something to get away from this blues, from the rhythm and blues, as you said. And uh, he told them that he, the, the manner in which Jamaican music was in, imitating contemporary American black music was what he wanted to change a bit. And so, in the store's backyard, they sat down and worked out the recipe for a new sound. They sought a formula for a music that was distinctly Jamaican whilst retaining its roots in the R&B and popular jazz that beamed down into Jamaica from radio stations in the Southern American states. Ska was a music that resulted from that Sunday morning session. It was a shuffle boogie rhythm of a type popularized by artists like uh, Louis Jordan and Erskine Hawkins. And I could continue reading. The unexpected emphasis on the offbeat only emphasized its addictive flavor. And they talk about um, um, Ernest Wranglin said of the, uh, of the day, and they're quoting now, and he told us this much earlier too, we, we just wanted it to sound like the theme music from one of those westerns um, that were on TV in the late 50s. That Sunday meeting is critical for all of us to remember and to know. Look on the ball. You know, um, honestly, Dale, tears running out of my eyes. And I, you know, it is because mm-hmm. I think we are not, um, I, I, we are responsible for history. Mm-hmm. And we're responsible for how history is written. 
And as media and journalists, I think we really do have a responsibility to ensure that we don't just part, but that we investigate and tell the truth of Jamaica's music. I feel that we haven't been telling the truth of Jamaica's music because in a lot of ways, and I'm very sad to say, we, 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 we have left out down to the Honourable Ernest Wranglin. And, you know, I'm talking about it's my profession, um, the media. Uh, uh, let, me, let me, because me a ball, let me take a quick break. <laughs> Honoured, more than you can ever believe, to have in the studio with me, Ernie Wranglin, Dr. The Honourable Ernest Wranglin. This morning, the man, the music, the legend, the icon. Um, Uncle Ernie, let us talk about those days at Studio One, because you said a lot of firsts were created at Studio One, and you were there for them. Tell us about them. Mm-hmm. Tell us about Studio One, all the things that created that Studio One. Mm-hmm. Oh, Studio One. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, um, the, the first thing to begin with, I think we were the first person to start a certain type of music. And um, let's say a style of music. And um, the first thing that we did... We listened to the um, rhythm and blues, and we decided that um, instead of the one, two, one, two, you know, and we, we changed it to one, two, three, four, instead of one, you know, mm-hmm. one, two, one, two, yes. we got the one, two, three, four, and this is where we started the Sliska, yes. you know, and... Um, we had a heavy emphasis on the second and the fourth beat. Mm-hmm. That's, mm-hmm. that's that's where we that style came in, and that was ours. And um, well, the how we did it. Um, well, you know, Coxon had a very well. I call him Coxon, but uh, Dad Cecil Dad. Yes, yes, and. Uh, and we, he had a very good ear, and uh, that is was what he would hear certain music, but and but he he would he would know exactly how to explain it into a certain way, mm-hmm. and I guess this is where I came in, yes. you know, and I, I, and and you also worked with a young Bob Marley. Oh, yes. Uh, Bob was the first. Well, this is how Cox's studio came in. Uh, because we used to go to other places like Federal before it was uh, being built properly. Mm-hmm. And we we used to go to the, the, the little one-room studio in, in those days. But after that, and um, Coxon built um, uh, Dad built um, his studio now, and then when he when he was finished, well, the, the, this studio is a, was was a night club mm-hmm. that we called the End. Yes, I used to play there too, mm-hmm. and um, so eventually he. Um, he got he, he seemed to get he bought, he bought this to the, yes. bought that area and what our listeners need to understand on this uh, is that you were the house arranger at um at at, at studio one so that um put you in a position where you were working with all these artists who came in yeah. um arranging the music and talking them through the music and so on yeah um and and and, and hence um bob marley and and even simmer down yeah um was something that you worked um yeah. on um some of the other artists that you worked with at studio one well, a whole lot <laughs> you know uh, everybody <laughs> I, I can't remember, but yes, yes. it's so much. But I was giving a little idea about Bob Marley. Yes. He started at, uh, this was when Coxon Studio was just was going, was going to be officially now open. Yes. And um, um, you had 
Yeah, 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 the the um, musical um, the engineer was Headley Jones, who is a fine bass player and guitar player yes. and a, 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 a most um, technician in electronics yes. and so forth. And he was going to be he was at the beginning there the the um engineer mm-hmm. and um so when the studio that day when the studio was just going to open officially Bob Marley was the guy who opened that studio wow and I wow. was well I I was always in charge of that studio yeah you know was and, it um, was it Bob Marley and the whalers at that time Yes, yes. And and I and I know you've said that at the time you recognized something in Bob Marley. You said he was more or less a perfectionist. Yeah. It it um it was yeah, when they came to 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 do the recording. Yeah. It was a, a, a like a history yeah. because um they did they, they didn't come with any special thing. You know, they are young fellows, and yes. you know, so um, I start. I started off a thing, a little introduction, of, uh, and eventually they came to this tune that made a big hit, which was "It Hurts to Be Alone." Oh, yes. That was when that mm-hmm, tune mm-hmm, mm-hmm. was formulated. Yes. Well, I noticed that. And on the album, they didn't mention anything about me. Ooh. But anyway, I'm glad that I was part of, part of it. Yes, and this is why I cried a while ago, you know, because I, I know a lot. You know, I've been, I know I've been studying um, Daddy, uh, Uncle Ernie for a very long time, and I know yes. that, that this is not just the one place where, where, where they don't mention you, but we want to reclaim uh, history. And in the same way that you went in search of the lost rhythm in yes. Senegal, in Dakar, um, it's the same way that we must go in search of your rhythms because, yeah. and to ensure that you're mentioned. And, 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 and that takes me to something else, that at one point you were credited in some places at, as El Pancho. Yeah. Is, is that, that, that during the days of, um, because of those contractual arrangements with Federal, mm. and so that he could not be credited with work done for other clients, so the pseudonym Whoa. was El Pancho in El some Pancho. Place. Huh? El Pancho. Huh? You were El Pancho. Pancho? No, El, El, yeah. El Pancho. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know, you have me out to that one. I don't really remember that. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna leave it right. Show. We're gonna oh. leave it right there because it's, it's it's all I'm credit you sometimes. You know, <laughs> it's an interesting situation that we're um, conversation we're having here yeah. uh, in the studio with Doctor the Honorable Ernest Ernie Wrangling, the man, the music, the legend. I wonder if Herbie's still there. I know Herbie have to go. Now. Herbie, you still there? Yes, I am. <laughs> what you think about guitar in Ernest? Ah, right? <laughs> oh, goodness, what a beautiful uh, sound. You know, I went and pulled out my old battered copy and I was reading the line. Yes. Uh, if you have the record, I don't know if the CD has the line or not. <laughs> No, because, uh, no, don't have it. E- e- even Uncle Ernie get up out of the studio, come check it, you know, to say, let me see that CD. <laughs> let, let, me what, let me read what it says. Yes. The Standard Telegraph called Ernest, quote, a guitar explorer who, possess, who possesses a tremendous technique and executes the most complicated melodic ideas at astonishing speed. End of quote. Wow. Just he called him, quote, a highly competent musician who can play anything that is demanded of him. End wow. of quote. Wow. London Crescendo said, quote, British jazz can only gain by the present, by his presence. And British magazine BMG, um, ban- banjo, mandolin, and guitar ma- uh, magazine, mm-hmm. featured him in an article by Chris Spelling, who glowed, quote, he is capable of execution and ridiculously fast single, single string phrases with perfect syncopation between his hands, despite the fact that his wrist is held flat, the 
it is mm-hmm. unorthodox, unorthodox to me to do it. Mm-hmm. And complicated. I implore every reader of this column within its hiking distance of London to make the pilgrimage. We're going to leave it there for you, uh, Herbie. Thank you so and much I for that. You yes. Hear too, and go on listening in the car. Yes, please, and have a good one today at the Jamaica Music Museum. It's a good day for everybody to head to the Jamaica Music Museum after the program done. You know, just to, just to celebrate the music. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Herbie Miller. Herbie Miller, the director, curator of the Jamaica Music Museum, and we want to go to Dean Fraser. Uh, Dale Dean Fraser is traveling. Mm-hmm. Yes, can we say where he is? He told me he was in Trinidad. Okay. Uh, so he's in Trinidad, and uh, we're trying to make that connection with him on on the phone lines because, of course, uh, here is another point of view, um, another protege also. Could, uh, all of us are young people and proteges when we come in the presence of Dr. The Honorable Ernest Ernie Wrangler and Dean Fraser, someone who is a saxophonist, and you heard... Um, the um, Ernie Ernie talked about um, getting reading the notes for just to play the saxophone, um, violin, etc. Uh, in the early days, teaching himself, reading those books, and here we have a saxophonist who has done a compilation a, and a collaborative album also with uh, Ernie Wrangling. Later on, we're going to go to the phone line to speak with Maurice uh, Gordon, and also no stranger uh, to this space, but it's like a reunion because a long time that we haven't spoken to any of these brothers. And Dale, of course, is, um, remains in the studio uh, with us. Um, while we wait then uh, to make that connection with uh, Dean Fraser, uh, um, Uncle Ernie, your, your, your musical journey, it... It, it includes all genres. We've got jazz, mentor, caipso, ska, rocksteady, reggae, doo-wop, R&B, boogie-woogie. Um, but even listen to this, you seem to have a special place in your heart for jazz. Well, it seems you have a special place mm-hmm. in your heart for jazz. You love jazz music. We have what? You love jazz. Do you have a special place in your, in your heart you, for jazz? You oh, 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 okay. Well... Yeah, jazz music. <laughs> it seems it seems to be a, a, a real natural thing <laughs> yes. of all that, you know. Yes. But when you put it together, music is just music anyway. But uh, I think um, jazz music is 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 much more. Uh, it's like classic. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. because uh, y- y- you have to be well learned to that you can express certain things about it, because generally it's like you're telling a story. Yes, you know, and you must you can tell a story unless you know you know what <laughs> mm-hmm. what you're talking about. True. And you're a good storyteller using the music. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, so, so that I, I, and we can see that, that, that special, um, we can hear it, um, that special place um, for, for jazz in your heart. Yeah. We're standing by um, for, for Dean Fraser. Um, he's on, yes. All right. So we're going to go to the phone lines um, now to speak with, do we have the collaborative CD with Dean? I have a no. computer, right. Computer, right. So <laughs> our listeners understand something that's happening this morning, which is that um, for no particular reason, it seems, and this is the first time it has happened to me, that the computers uh, are, are, are not up and running in the studio. And so what that has left us with is the old way of doing things, which is playing CDs yes. from a CD player. Mm-hmm. Um, and thank you so much uh, for carrying in these CDs, uh, Dale, because as you can see, I, did, I, I walked with only one, uh, yes. which I play every Sunday morning. And this one is called... Um, the ultimate wrangling roots, Ernest Wrangling. Uh, uh, ultimate uh, wrangling. <laughs> um, uh, when I heard the, the promo um, from Tad's record um, all of last year, I think a, a lot of last year, on this program, and there were many, many ads running, we, the new album was Dean Fraser 
and uh, Ernie Wrangling. Every Sunday morning, I'll come on the microphone and beg a copy. And I said, Dean Fraser, I need a copy, Tads, I need a copy um, of, that, of that CD. Um, I really love it. Dean Fraser is joining us on, on the phone lines live from Trinidad. Dean, thank you so much for making the time. Good morning, Kabo. Good morning, Ernie, Deal. Everybody huh? big up. Please. Dean, Stop. good morning. Huh? Dean Fraser. Yeah. Yes. The, the, oh, the, Dean. Yes, Dean Fraser. Yeah. <laughs> He's on the line. Yes. Wonder if he's going to come and play. Is he going to come and teach me something on his saxophone this morning? <laughs> <laughs> Dean, I'm afraid you're going to have to answer that one, you know. You're not getting out of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um... And as you know, saxophonist extraordinaire, um, Dean Fraser, your collaborative album um, released last year, as, as we said before. Um, uh, just listening to that, for me, one of the greatest tributes, I think, and, and a fitting tribute, too, to the musical genius and the giant that is um, Ernie, Wrangling, uh, Ernie Wrangling, the magnitude of Ernie Wrangling. Um, Dean, while you were doing that, did the idea of a tribute cross your mind during production of Two Colours? Uh, and and the, and how the ti- and how did you come by the title Two Colors? You know, so I don't really know. Me just think that you know you have this great man, and the, the, just the chance to collaborate with him. You know, mm-hmm. I just it, this just came to my mind. You know, yes, it it, it wasn't anything that Ooh, I yeah. went home mm-hmm. and about it just came to my mind yeah and that was it, 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 it you know two colors ha- nothing else really nothing hard nothing you know yeah it, higher powers literally at an energy frequency vibration we say all the time <laughs> because really and truly um one of the best tributes and, and as i said before a fitting tribute um, you didn't think it so, it just come to your mind. It means that it was your purpose to do. And it turned out to be right. a great tribute um, to Dr. The Honorable Ernie Wrangland, the man, the music, the legend, the icon. So thank you so much for taking us on that journey in that tribute, uh, Dean. Um, let us talk uh, about um, how Ernie Wrangland might have influenced you yourself as a saxophonist. And I know Ernie said earlier this morning that... Um, some of the early books he was reading in terms of teaching himself the notes, um, to read the notes of, 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 of musical notes, um, was um, also books on, um, uh, on playing the saxophone, which is interesting. Yes. Yes, you do. Um, mm. But my, my influence, you know, my, my, what you would call my introduction to, to Ernie Wrangling actually came from a man named Sonny Bradshaw, mm-hmm. whom I was a young saxophonist at age 15 playing in Sonny Bradshaw's band. Mm-hmm. And Sonny would tell me about a Ernie Wrangling who strapped a guitar to his back and just keep it. Anytime you see him, he had a guitar on his back and he would practice he would just walk and practice, and that's it. You will never see him unattached, you know? Mm-hmm. So, right away, you, you you can figure out greatness there, you understand me? Yes. This, is, this man is going to be a super musician. And, mm-hmm. I mean, my, my one of my teachers, Sonny Bradshaw, would talk to me in parables and, you know, mentioning Ernie behaving like that. He would say to me, you have to practice. Mm-hmm. You understand me? You have to practice to become someone as good. Yes. You know, which I know I don't reach there, so yes. But, <laughs> you know, it was just fantastic to hear about a young Ernie Wrangling just walking with his guitar every day and practicing, you know, until I met him some years later, you know, doing a jazz session um, when I remember saxophonist Junior coming to Jamaica and they had a jazz session at the Jankunu Lounge mm-hmm. Jonathan, mm-hmm. and that was where I met all these great people and you know just just was just grateful to 
be there. Yes, yes. Hold the line for me, please, Dean, if you can, for one minute. I come just a quick break. Fraser is on the line, and we're talking about uh, his collaboration, but also how he's been influenced um, by Ernie Wranglin. And, and, and so that Ernie, um, Dean, at early, early in the day, 15 years old, is that, when you said 15, I, I kind of perked up there because I thought, wow, um, I, I knew because we've had conversations before that you started early. I just didn't remember that it was so early and playing in a band. And it's similar to, 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 to Ernie Wranglin. It seems to me that those who are the best um, of us in terms of the creative arts uh, started really, really early. This is important, isn't it? It is very important, um, especially when you, you know, get a chance to be exposed to all these great people around you. Mm-hmm. And um, I would think it, it's a great thing, you know. And mm-hmm. um, these days I, I call it my duty to make sure that the youngsters who come around is exposed to everything. Mm-hmm. You understand me? Because, I mean, I was able to you know, meet people like Ernie Wrangling at an early age and mm-hmm. this really influenced my career right now as a musician, you know, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so this is the way to go. And you talk about the discipline and Dale also talked about that discipline um from yes. from from Ernie Wrangling. Um, the, 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 this is a dis- this is this discipline that you talk about. It it has to be do- it has to be done. It has to be an action thing, isn't it? Explain that to us because and the reason why I'm asking this is because um, we're looking at where the music has uh, how the music has evolved and where it is a, is a, it has evolved to and what it is that we might have been mi- we might have been missing um, from Ernie Wranglin uh, to bring us to the point where we are with. Not that kind of a discipline. The, this discipline is very. I really. It, this is something very serious. Mm-hmm. We. You have to practice. You have to listen. You have to retain. Then you have to execute. And when you put all of these together, you know, you become a total musician. It, it is very important for you to, you know, get all of these different areas that you help to mm-hmm. make you the, 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 the kind of musician you are. Mm-hmm. And the discipline comes in all these stages. Yeah. You understand me? So we, we really have to seriously sit down and I tell all my young musicians that, look, you have to find time to play your instrument, practice mm-hmm. your instrument, you know, learn from other people, retain things that you learn, and then you are able to just, you know, play, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And this is, this, is, this is like a senior part of your whole career. This, this will make you. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, and, and when you talk about longevity, um, Dale, you also, the collaborative album that we, we're talking about with, um, uh, with Two Colors, with Dean okay. Fraser, yes. that you're also on this album. You've yes. also worked on this album. Talk to us about that, because we asked um, Dean about, uh, and we, we understand the energy and the frequency of the vibration. This is some high, 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 high um, business. Your own experience on that album, and did you also feel that? Um, th- did you feel that 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 tribute like ness? Yeah, um, I was. I'm. I, I'm. I have to say, I'm. Re- I've give. I have to give thanks to Dean Fraser to consider me to play and you know to play most of his tracks. I, I yeah. think six, seven, or eight of his tracks. Yeah. I was surprised that he chose me, and I was. You know, it, that, I'm going to put that that gun in the record book for me. You know, like a highlight to, to, wow. to play it for Dean is that one of the, the Jamaica best arrangers yeah. and top saxophonist and Mr. Rang the top guitarist. You know, so for me to be on that is like a you know a pioneer time in my life. Mm-hmm. I'm really, really happy. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. to. Be, to be instrumental in the album. Yes. Um, so, so you're not going to answer the tribute part of it. You're just glad that you were called. Yeah, I'm <laughs> glad to go. You know, I'm glad to find the thing here with, with them too. Because, because I know many of them got that history. Like, I you understand, know. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Dina totally got that, you know. He's not even going to analyze it right now, you know. He's just happy that, listen, I, I, I got to work with Dean Fraser. I, you know, tribu- well, I'm calling it a tribute to Ernie Wrangling. Because yes. when you listen to the album, that's what you get. Yes. Yeah, yes, Dean. Well, I can add to that. Yes. Really, you know, Abu. I mean, 
Mm-hmm. He will just make it sound like, you know, yes, him, 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 him playing a project with me and it was nice and thing. Yes. He was actually the backbone of the whole project. Wow. You understand what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I mean, mm-hmm. him not going to take credit for it, but me am going to give him the credit. Yes. He was actually the backbone of the whole situation. I mm-hmm. mean, I would call Gail, I mean Gail, and I would say, Gail, we need to record some tracks today. Mm-hmm. I would journey to Ocherius, right? And we would go into to, to, to Dale's little apartment, yeah. right? And we would record Ernie some for a lot of hours, you yeah. know? And then, you know, Dale would, you know, accommodate us, make sure that Ernie is there, you know, make sure that Mama Ernie send him out to Ernie <laughs> and everything. Yeah. And it was just, it, it, the, the, this, this thing was really, you know, it was really nice. It, mm-hmm. it, it, this was something that you wanted to do, you know. When I when when, when it comes time that I had to drive to Watch Rios, mm-hmm. I just wanted to do so, you know. Yes, and yes. of course, Bill was really inspirational and was you know gave his all mm-hmm. and uh, you know make it sound like a one way thing neither. Yes. Yes. I'm from Kingston and we sit down at the studio all mm-hmm. day mm-hmm. and lay these tracks and mm-hmm. I'll tell you, yeah. you know, of course, you know, he's a super bass player also, yes. you know, um, well, Dr. Deal, but I have to <laughs> mention that, you know, this bridging was an intricate part of the whole tribute to Ernie Wrangling, the two colors, and, wow. you know, I must commend him right now to and, and thank mm-hmm. him you know, for making yeah. this, you know, come true. And thank you, thank you both for that. And uh, all, well, I'm, I'm going to come back to, to Uncle Ernie. Let me just take a quick break because, and, and let me just say to everyone who's listening, this album, Two Colors, get a copy. Buy it on Spotify if, or, or, or whatever streaming service that's selling it. And listen, and then let us talk. Let's take a quick break. And we're talking about uh, the... Uh, the the um, collaborative work now in this segment of the program with Dean Fraser on the phone lines. Um, th- as I said before, the album is truly amazing. Um, it benefits the occasion because we're talking about um, a- an album that features Ernie Wrangling, it features yourself, Dean Fraser, it features Dale um, uh, in studio. Uh, Uncle Ernie, how did you enjoy working on this, your most recent project? Uh, with these two youngsters. How did you enjoy working on the album with Dean? Yeah, well, um, Dean, I really, that is one of our musicians that I really appreciate, you know, as far as, um, uh, um, what should I say, is, is, is being such a good, great young fellow, because I, I would have to call him a young fellow because I'm pretty pretty younger than him. Yes, yes, he's, he's a youngster, you know. <laughs> you know, but um, yeah. he's you know he's one of our finest saxophone saxophonists in this time, and um, you know I I really I watched him coming up and. I appreciate his way of, uh, of uh, his um, how f- how he has excelled, mm-hmm. you know, and um, mm-hmm. I really appreciate what he has done, how he has, has been doing, and um, I wish him all the very best. Yes. I know because um, I'm much younger than him, so. Uh, I don't know how long <laughs> <laughs> we'll be around, <laughs> but I I appreciate being with him, yes. and um, I admire him a lot as a fine musician mm-hmm. and a, a great guy who's um, been very successful, you know. And I hope him. I'm wishing him a, a very long life and mm. much more. Um, success. 
Yes, you know. yes. Um, it, um, uh, Dean, I know that we've had Ernie being honored um, right here in Jamaica and, um, and, and, and elsewhere. Um, but, but, but I found myself tearing up a while ago because I, I was talking about um, Ernie Wrangling is very humble. We, we all know that. He's one of the humblest giants and <coughs> legends that we've, we've ever met. And, mm -hmm. but, but, but I know also that recognition um, on the island, and, and Uncle Ernie is sitting right here and I'm saying it, um, is not what it should be. And that, and that, that should, there, there could be so much. And it, your album it began to, 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 to speak to that, you know, in a, the collaborative effort in a serious way. Um, but, but what are your thoughts on this in terms of how, as a nation, um, as someone like Ernie Wranglin, Mm. It's, it's not as <laughs> you know. I'm kind of counting my words on it, um, mm. but but he's not as recognized or 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 or, um, or valued um, as he should be. Mm. Well, you see, the, the situation right now is that we, the musicians, have to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, because I don't think anyone else is gonna you know take mm -hmm. up this mantle mm -hmm. to really. Mm -hmm sure the world that this is a super musician and you know his name should be in lights and you yes, know yes. so it, 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 it is simple right now really yes. we the you know the peers have to deal with it yes. you understand me and um, this is one of the reasons why the thought from Tad yes. Father Tad to me saying, boy, you think we could have do something with Ernie? Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I think I broke all barriers to make sure this happened. Yes. You understand yes. me? So, Beautiful work, by the way. Beautiful. We just have to yeah. take our time, you know, mm -hmm. in the industry, in the music industry, to, to really give thanks to one another. And yes. we want to make sure right now that we give thanks for Ernie Ranglin mm -hmm. and make sure them live forever. You yes, understand? Because yes. it's our duty. Yes. Again. Yeah. You know, so me not depend upon nobody right now. <laughs> yeah, this is a great man. Uh, this was a great man, you know. Yes. We want to recognize him right here in our Jamaican music industry and I am asking all of the musicians them right to please you know, make sure say you know, recognize this great man and make sure say that in a, each and every one of you young musicians head say, the name must never be forgotten. Well said, Dean. Thank you so much for that, um, for, for, for taking some time out and joining this conversation. Um, we're very honored to have you in the space and to speak um, power into the space that is um, also paying tribute to uh, Ernie Wrangling. As I said earlier, we see him um, in the same way that we view Jimi Hendrix, the greatest guitarist of all time. Well, you know, uh, and so uh, I, I think, you know, ed the education industry will catch on, the medication ministry will catch on. I hope from this program the education ministry catches on because we need um, that input, that inroad into all the schools. The culture ministry would ca will catch on because we also need that. And we don't want our artists only to be um, seen in, within a tourism context, but somebody as great as, 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 as Ernie. Um, we must begin to, to, to honor the greats amongst, among us in the same way that we see others do, because Jimi Hendrix, I think, you know, Ernie Wrangley, right. same, same pantheon. Right. Thank you so much, right. Dean. Thank you so much. Much appreciated, as always. My pleasure, Kabo. Mm -hmm. Man, mm -hmm. honor to you, sir. I make man. sure I tell them mm -hmm. right now. You understand me? So, uh. you know, we call Ernie Pops, right? Yes. So, we just want to say, Anna Pop and why... This, this really is a highlight in my career to be able to collaborate with you and I just want to say thank you very much sir for giving me this opportunity and for mm -hmm. making a great record you know I can tell people when you when you put that CD or 
what is, what whatsoever you have it on in your mm. car and you turn that on, I am sure you will enjoy it to the fullest, right? So big up Ernie Wrangling and also Dale, thanks for making this possible, you know. So we just and of course we want to say big thank you to Todd's Records. All right. You know, thank big, you big so. thank you to Father Todd and Junior Todd for helping and for making this possible. Yes. And we give thanks to Jamaica. Give thanks. Give thanks to you too, uh, Dean Fraser, yes. as always. Yeah, thanks to Irie also. All right. Okay. Thank you, thank my you brother. Thank you very much. Thank you, my brother. Yeah. All right. Yes, Dale? Big up, Dean. All yes, right. Dean. Uh, I'm coming from a lesson, you know. You remember. I wonder if he's gone. Dean, you there? Go, go <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. He's, he's still there. Uh, all the very best here, so And I wish you a, a lot of success on, you, on that ninth album that you have made. And um, thank you, Pop. Uh, I hope thank you, sir. And 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 when I get to when I get back to Oche, yeah. I leave in the BMW with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, you know. Yes. Yeah. You you heard it here. I leave in this with you. <laughs> All right, Dean. Yeah, All right. God the, bless you, sir. Up, take, All right. Yeah, yes, thank thank you. And, and we must big up. We must. We must big up, Mrs. Wrangling. Please. Yeah. Of yeah. course. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Yeah, man. She, she bless her, bless her. That is true. Give to her also. Mrs. Wrangling, good morning to you. Good morning to you. And thank you so much for lending your husband uh, to us for a few minutes. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Dean. And uh, we take a quick break. Uh, we're going to break and then go into the Supreme Ventures draw. So when we come back, we uh, continue our discussion with uh, Ernie Wrangling and Dale. And also, we're going to go talk to Maurice right after this. Inside of the Africa Forum. It is running African. He invented the music, not the word. And he says even reggae. He didn't invent the word either, but he invented the music. When Anna Wranglin says, I invented the music, we're going to have to understand that. Understand that he represents from post independence 1940s into pre independence 50s going into a um, into 62 and then uh, what well, pre pre independence and post independence and uh, 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 you know now talks about republicanism he's there for all of it and his music speaks to it Ernie Wrangling I call him Uncle Ernie one of the greatest guitarists of all times one of the greatest arrangers of all times he's worked with all of them He's on all of the music, <laughs> you know. He's on all of the music. Just to, just to list some of uh, some of the music from his extensive catalogue. Uh, talk from the 1960s, Guitar in Earnest, which we played from earlier. Listen, Google Guitar in Earnest, read about it, and listen to it. Just leave it on your laptop or your phone or whatever and just walk up and down and do what you're doing. Cook your Sunday dinner, um, eat your dinner, wash your clothes. Do what you're doing, but just listen to guitar in earnest and then let us talk. I, you, you know, music that touches you at a cellular level, that touches your soul, that touches deep in some places that you never know existed? That's guitar in earnest with Ernie Wrangling. So that was in the 60s. And then 64 also Wrangling. Wrangling is 64. Then Reflection was in 65. Mod Mod Wrangling in 1966. Remember Archie? If we could have sing, would I sing Archie? No, Ian. Ian Forrest. Call me and sing Archie on the phone. I dare you. Call me and sing Archie. Ian Forrest, I'm talking to you. Call me. And we'll put you on and you sing Archie. All right. <laughs> Archie booked them up here. Archie booked them up. And um, so Boss Reggae was in 1969. Rangalipso in 76. Monty Alexander in 81. Below the Baseline in 96. Memories of Barbara Mack in 97. In Search of a Lost Rhythm. He went all the way to Africa in 1998. Interesting about that discussion and about what has been said about Ernie Wrangling and the music. There was a big conversation on the island the other day about um, Stone Boy and the reggae music and, and what he said. But artists have been talking about this for a long time. 
And many of the greats and the greatest, when they go in search of the, the last rhythm, they go to Africa. And Ernie Wranglin went to Dakar, Senegal, and teamed up with people like Baba Mal. You understand me? Everything is connected. All right. And then um, modern answers to old problems as in 2000. Softly with Wrangling was in 2015. Jazz Jamaica in 2016. Be what you want to be in 2019. Uncle Ernie, Ernie Wrangling received an honorary doctorate in music from the University of the West Indies in 2002. He was inducted into the Jamaican Music Hall of Fame in 2008. Ernie Wrangling is an icon. He's not a relic. Ernie Wrangling is alive. Ernie Wrangling is with us. Do you understand what I'm saying? Ernie Wrangling is here. And he's here in many ways. Even in the young people like Dale and like Maurice and like Dean and like me. <laughs> and like my father who's gone on. You know, sometimes you see me posing with a guitar and I know there are many of you, Andrew, and so many of you, Denise, Isis, who really love that picture all day. And you talk about it all the, all the while. That's my father's guitar. And uh, in that way, oh, Maurice is on the line. And in that way, um, so I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a ch- I'm a child of the guitar, right? And I'm going to tell you, my father used to just trum out, menge, menge, menge. We remember it, you know. My mother used to ask him about it all the time. Um, and every once in a while, he'd go into another note and so on. But Ernie Wrangling was a conversation piece before we understood that it was the Ernie Wrangling was even a person. <laughs> Long time. For those who found the guitar, also found Ernie Wrangling. So I want to go to the phone lines to speak with Maurice. Uh, Uncle Ernie is stretching his legs a little while we, while we took the, um, the break. But we want to go to the phone lines to speak with Maurice. Good morning, Mr. Maurice Gordon. How are you doing? I'm all right, Andrea. Nice to be here. How are you? You know, I knew you were going to come call me Andrea. You know, because <laughs> Maurice, along the way, I changed my name to Cabo. <laughs> Oh, all right. I'm not there. I don't know. Pardon me. Respect. I know, I know. You know, um, what does it mean? Listen, now, you see, you know, Maurice, I'll forgive you that. You know why? Because back in the day, I don't know if a week passed without we have, we're doing an interview, talking about the music, talking about guitar, don't it? No, yeah, yeah. That's true. There were lots of interviews that we did. It's, it's like a reunion because it's the same thing with Ernie Wrangling. It's the same thing with Dean Fraser, who was on earlier. And I'm interviewing. Um, Dale for the first time today, but this feels like a family reunion, you know, going, going back, going, going, looking back to go forward. Mm-hmm. Yes, well, I think I have to do that. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, Maurice, uh, my apologies because uh, for the first time in the history of me doing this program and computers have been in use, I came in this morning and we have te- technical difficulties. So, all the songs that are all queued up on the computer, we're not able to play them. We're playing from the very old. Oh, damn. Yes, we're playing for. Remember with the panic ear. <laughs> yeah. We're playing from the very old fashioned. Um, CD player, if you don't mind. That, that still works. That it, still it, works. It, it works, but I don't have your CD, and I'm, I'm my um, my apologies. And mm-hmm. I'm just so I just managed to find a few that that Dale brought with him, and we're we're, we're getting by with that. So I'm apologizing to our listeners, okay. and we'll play we'll play um, your CDs next week. But listen, um, Maurice, you. Reminded me of of um, Ernie's Archie. Archie. I, I, I I wouldn't even have thought about it, but you wrote to me oh, about. I, lo- I love that song, man. Yes. I played it in my show now. Can but, you uh, can I you play it now? It I turned some students onto it. Can you play? Right. Can you play it for us now? Can we not have it on the CDs? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can I can send you, but you can't play anything this film. Uh, 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 my guitar too. Well, here you man, the, the guitar tune man, play. <laughs> Yeah, my guitar has to be tuned. Oh, the guitar. So I play it on my show. Yes. All right, so the guitar is not tuned. I, I, I also... Mm-hmm. 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 That's 
the melody. Yes. I played on my show, oh. and I changed the name. What? And I changed the name. We say Archie. Archie broke them up. We say Maurice broke them up. We say Drummy broke them up. We say BSC broke them up. Yes. The idea for that. Yes. The idea for that. I told. I told. Kenroy Shortman to play that to the school show when I was teaching him. Mm. And so he changed the song name to Shortman broke them up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm now doing the same thing because I love that song. I mean, there's an incredible yeah. guitar solo in there. And uh, yes. Ernie's just walking through it like a walk in the park. I and, uh, know. Uh, so we just start doing it. You know, we just start dying. So I, I just put it, I'm using it now as my uh, introductory show yes. uh, for the musicians of the show. I'm doing, uh, and in fact, I just did a show where I played back the solo for uh, It Hurts to Be Alone. That's one of the greatest, earliest and greatest solos by Ernie Wrangler. You know, um, you know so, on, so, the, on the Mali on the Yes, Mali he mentioned it this morning. And, and, and uh, you know, as fate will, will have it, I'm just, you know, saying to you what I told you earlier. So, so since you have the guitar... <laughs> <laughs> And give us a few. Oh, I, I, I play a piece. I play a piece of that song. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Right, I understand. But it's it's brilliant that you're able to do it on uh, yes. And it goes all the way up here. I can't go up. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I do have it on uh, video, I'll send it to you. Yeah, please. Uh I love it, I love it, I love it. Uh, talk, talk to us now about your relationship with Ernie. I know, you know, I've been following your career, as we said earlier, for a long, 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 long time, you know. And um, uh, so many conversations about the guitar and the music over the years. And I know that you're influenced um, uh, by Ernie Wrangling. Let's talk a little bit about that influence. How has he influenced you? Well, the, the, the parts that we play and uh, in a lot of the songs were originated and developed by him, the the picking, the chicken picking, we style it, or, you know, the, the kind of similar muted guitar thing that he does, which he does so incredibly well and so easy, is a hard technique to roll your pick. Mm -hmm. And uh, mastery of that is essential. He's, he's uh, totally uh, has that down. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that is something that we all try to master. Myself, Gibby, Tourette, all the guys, uh, because it's a part of the vocabulary. Mm -hmm. But he also did a lot of modern stuff. The, the stuff he did with uh, Jimmy Cliff on his album, the uh, Many Rivers to Cross, and, yes. and uh, some of those albums. Uh, there's a lot of incredible guitar stuff on it that we're all just trying to learn and master to do back the way he does it, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And of course, there are lots of other things that define it, but uh, but most often, this it, is, is the single line playing of melody and chords, which is so incredible. Mm -hmm. And he's up there with everybody else, or even way ahead of a lot of other people that do it in mm -hmm. the world. Yes, that is quite and, true. Uh, he's talked about, you know. Yes, yeah, he's quite talked about. I, I talk one of my favorite guitar players uh, is a man, Rodney Jones, from uh, he lives in New York. Mm -hmm. And I talk to Rodney Jones sometime. And Rodney, when I, anytime I uh, post, I just I was remember I was in uh, I was in Jamaica in October. Mm -hmm. I was hanging out with Ernie and, uh, for about a day for the day with with Gibby. Mm -hmm. We went to visit him. He needs he needs to have some visitors, you know, just to to visit him. So he's not because he's not really traveling, and it's nice to have, him, to have some visitors. Yes. It worked out all great. It yes. was a wonderful day. He shared his experience. Uh, uh, his wife was fabulous. We hung mm -hmm. around the yard. We played. Mm -hmm. We talked. Mm -hmm. Played him a song. I, I wrote a song for him called uh, "Blues for Ernie." Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, uh, mm -hmm. Um, I want 
song mm -hmm. named after beautiful, him. Beautiful, beautiful. And I've written mm -hmm. down uh, I've written down what the song, the, the song here. We I used to play the song here. Rum raisin. Mm -hmm. I, I I used to I wrote that song down and I played. Yes, yes. Uh, a lot when I when I play and uh, there are all these things that he does. I mean, I also recently when he did that thing for uh, change. Playing for change, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he did a, a version of a, a touch tune. Man, they, they, he's just so comfortable and he just runs yes. through it. I have to go work on that 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 because it's so sweet, yes, and so good what he does. Right, you know? but there are lots of things you can't really count. The thing. We can't really play Jamaican music per se on the guitar without him having some influence. And this is the point I'm making. So let us let us talk about that influence and 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 how we define those parts because. Um, this is something that I want to flesh out this morning, and I see you going right there. So take us there. Well, you know, there are so many things that we define as reggae, but I mean, we're not going to get into the contemporary discussion about reggae not being played, but we're talking about the roots music of Jamaica, not the, the now stuff, which we can't define in one way. Mm -hmm. But uh, And that stuff nowadays doesn't really have any way traditional guitar from the old school that it, it has more of uh, R&B, uh, ne ne neo soul guitar and all that other things and rock. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the old school of playing reggae, the, the chop, so whether it be a single or a double chop, for instance, we it, it was defined by those, those you know, by him, mm -hmm. primarily because he was the main, the main person at the time. Yes. And he's played in all the genres of music that we've created in Jamaica. That's another thing. He's yeah. played in the folk music, He's played in the gospel music. He's played in the... the Mento. Yeah, Mento. He's played in the rock steady. Yeah, yes. Mento. Right? And he's played in the, the, the all the modern jazz reggae thing. Mm -hmm. I want to do a, a, what I call a jazz and dub project, and it's really just about playing the type of stuff that he does mm -hmm. over the you know the heavy drum and bass thing because that that below the bass line album is absolutely wicked. Mm -hmm. You know it was uh, it was uh, it was hard to define at first because it was mm -hmm. so raw. But when you listen to it and you understand it, you, you find out there's so much music and so many things there. Yes, it's fantastic. Below the bass line, you know, but all the parts, you know, mm -hmm. yes, all the parts, are, Andrea, all the parts that we play, a lot of it was shaped and designed. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it created by him, so that's how the music. It, it, it we can't really play that music without playing, uh, really. touching up on his influence. And and this is this, to you me. Know? This is to me. This is a critical point that needs to be made, which I think is overlooked. Uh, and and earlier I said you cannot write the history of uh, the history of the story of Jamaica's music without including Ernie Wranglin and, and Herbie Miller said, no, but, outside of that, it will be flawed. Who would do that? How is it possible to do that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, it's not like, possible to do that. I mean, the man is the history of the music. Yes. Um, you know, he's one of the prime movers. The thing is that he went across the board. He also, did you know that he also played bass on some, some recording? Yes, 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 I know yeah. that, yes. Yeah. Um, and he also had to use different names to get by the different studios because of contracts. <laughs> I was talking about that this morning. I think I didn't yeah. know I'm going to talk about that too much. Yeah, um, yeah, but but we did... We, we told me so one time, if? in his heyday, when he, when he, when he told me one time in his heyday when he was driving... To get to sessions and all that, him, him drive from Ochi to Kingston in about an hour. <laughs> and, uh, in a them days, a true fern gully. A whole time policeman. There's a policeman out of Spanish town, I was a watch out for them, so I'm going to pop them. <laughs> uh, when he was driving, because he had to get to a session and, and all these things, you know what I mean? Yes, yes, yes. I think, I think when you mentioned the bass guitar there, um, that he might, been, he might have been the first in terms of the electric, don't it? Um, it might have been, I don't know, I don't know but I, I mean, listen, I, I was jamming one time in, in, at the hotel in Kingston and Ernie, on an Ernie gig, and somebody had an acoustic bass, and Ernie took up the acoustic bass, and, and licked us for six, all of us for six, we had, we no, and he played the bass fine, all of us just like, wow, yes. and he was thrown, man, but I mean, he was fine, but yes. it was like brilliant. 
know? Yes, yes. So if you, if you, do you have a favorite? Because I, I, I mean, uh, d- uh, talking to a guitarist, I know, and somebody who is, it's also your soul and your heart, um, the, the music and the guitar in particular. <coughs> but when it comes to, to Ernie, um, do you have a favorite? I heard you mention below the bass line. No, 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 in terms of the album, in terms of a, a song or... All right, well, let's just talk about a song, not necessarily the album, yes. Oh, uh, geez, I can't really, I mean, the the, uh, the album he did with, with Monty Alexander, Ernie and Monty did an album, and he's got a version of Lullaby of the Leaves or Fly Me to the Moon. That album is incredible, it's just duet, it's just the two of them. Mm-hmm. That album is incredible for just your guitar. Yes, guitar. yes. He has an album that I, I, I found years ago, and it's hard to find. He did a version of... Uh, uh, the the the, the, the uh, Soup John B, the Barbados folk song, mm-hmm. and my God, that solo on that song is absolutely amazing. I can't wow. find it. I was I was asking his wife to find me a copy because I had it on cassette and I don't know where it is. But the right. solo on that, oh my God! I mean, and, and I mean, of course, I love Archie. I've always listened to this. That, that's like the the. the Yes, it is. Yeah, but he talks like a million things in it. You mm-hmm, know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, we, uh, our listeners have a lot to go to, to go and research and, and, and just to listen to because this is really a feast when you're talking about Ernie Wrangling you can't talk about him in half an hour or 15 minutes but that's all the time we have um, with you he's been with us since 7 o'clock by the, by the way uh, Maurice he's not in the studio right now because we just took a break um, for our lottery draw so he, he's going to stretch his, his feet but he'll be back shortly and I'm sure he's going to be sorry that he missed you online but he's been with us since 7 o'clock and um, this is really a musical Feast. It's it's just beautiful all around. Thank you so it's, it's, much. It's the history of our music. Is, yes. in, 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 if, if there was one person instrumentalist, he would be the person to define it. I think. Wow. Well you said. Know? Well said. If, if there was anything to honor him, because um, in terms of how, and I don't mean a one thing, I mean um, a more fluid uh, situation in terms of how Jamaica um, could incorporate Ernie Wrangling and the music of Ernie Wrangling in Jamaica's life. Um, the music is, is already there, but how, how do you think this could be formally done? Oh, geez. Well, we need to name some institutions after him. Some music institutions. I agree. You know, we need to we name some places after him and uh, create scholarships in his name. I agree. Those are some of the things that we need to do. Yes. And we need to make Jamaica the central uh, mecca for for study, for understanding, for learning. We need to yes. have an earning li- wrangling library of, of mm-hmm. music where we mm-hmm. we have things uh, documented and his soul is written down. There, so there's a guy in France, uh, Spain. That's transcribed his solos online, so mm-hmm. I can go to YouTube mm-hmm. and see his solos written down and played as the, as the video rolls out. Oh, oh. you know. So, so there's a lot of that. I do yes. some of that stuff myself. Yes. When I did my show for Miss Lou in uh, September, mm-hmm. I had to play Linstead Market because that's where I got exposed to mento guitar and so, mm-hmm. uh, up here because I wasn't I wasn't aware, fully aware of who this guitar player was. And I mean, I was hearing him in Jamaica when I was. Going. I didn't start playing guitar until in Canada. Mm-hmm. And so I got, I had a girlfriend and she had a CD called Wrangling Life. This was at the Ronnie Scott Club. Mm-hmm. And he was, you know, up there. And he was, you know, he was, uh, he was uh, in the top five guitarists in the world in the 60s, right? Yes, yes. By um, Melody Maker magazine. Mm-hmm. And uh, so they probably have more institutions covering him in some place outside of Jamaica than, than we do in Jamaica. I do we believe so. Create these yes. libraries yes. Uh, that we have. Of mm-hmm. All his material is uh, his recording, mm-hmm. his uh, re- music written down, mm-hmm. his history, yes. all the articles that are written about him. That yes. all needs to be happening and curated yes. in a place in Jamaica for people to research and what? come to find out. Maurice, Whether it be with Herbie Miller down at the library or more. Yes. Maurice, you've said it, you know. And I'm going to have that conversation with Herbie because I think some work has already begun. And Herbie was on the phone, the, the phone lines earlier with us also. Um, so, so it's never too late. And I think that you've no. said you've said no, a no, mouth, no. you've said it right there. And I think this is exactly where we need to go on everything that you've said. So let us now do it. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Man. Yes. As Thank bomb, you. As Respect to Ernie and please tell him big up. Yes. Like I said, I had a great time.
time with him in October. Yes. Absolutely fantastic. So it's yeah. Ernie and Dale who, who are here. So so big up to Dale too for me. <laughs> so big up to Ernie. Yeah, man, of big, course. Yes, big up you yourself. Know, yes, man, there's something I should. Yes. Something I need to tell you. Yes. Dale was one of my first students in, of bass guitar in Jamaica. Look at that. And he's absolutely one of the best. He now, is. here's the thing. Yes. If uh, I, I trained Dale, Dale became the bass player for Ernie. But okay. Dale is now almost a son to Ernie the way he takes care of him. I am so moved to tears and... and uh, well, he's a son. He's a son. And, and he's a son. And he's a he's taking on. He told us that this I'm morning. Absolutely blown away. Ah, uh, it's... Yeah, man, I'm proud. And just to see them together, to watch this, uh, oh, geez, like you know, uh, my brother, my brother. Thank you I'm so proud, much. I'm proud of him that I was yeah. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. I and really I thank appreciate. Ernie for the music, too. Thank him for the music. Thank him for the chords. Yes. Thank you, my brother. Yes. All right. Have a good one. You too. Paying taxes? Use your Sagicor Bank business credit card and get a one-month payment holiday. Conditions apply. The time by Sagicor Bank is... Now, a minute after nine o'clock, you're inside of the Africa Forum. It is uh, running African. For me, I, I'm just out of this world. I'm, I'm, I'm at the same place where Dale is. I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, don't lie. I'm just happy to be here. What a beautiful morning. Uncle Ernie, I call him. Ernest Wrangling. When you talk about the rhythms of Jamaica's musical heritage, you talk about Ernie Wranglin. So what we're listening to now is an album from 1998, In Search of the Lost Rhythm, an album by Ernest Wranglin, of course, um, was one of the first releases from Chris Blackwell's Palm Pictures label. And we talked earlier about Island Records and how um, Island Records had signed Ernie Wrangling in the 1950s. So the In Search of the Lost Rhythm, it refers to the decades-long absence from making music in Africa. So... We hear on 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 the album um, Baba Maud. Only Wrangling was playing with Baba Maud on North American shows, but then they went in search of a lost rhythm. And you know some of the things that were said about in search of a lost rhythm uh, in the different newspapers. I want to I want to read them to you. Um, some of the reviews. The the Orlando Weekly called the album an intoxicating oral bath that matches Wrangling's eclectic six-string leads and fills, uh, and fills and the steady bass work of Ira Coleman with traditional percussion and string instruments and luxurious chanting and singing. The Guardian newspaper deemed it a gently rhythmic, refreshingly original and contemporary sounding fusion that is both joyful, subtle and remarkable classic, I agree. And the Sydney Morning Herald considered it a beautifully recorded album, an all acoustic session using just percussion, stringed instruments and vocals with the relaxed celebratory atmosphere of musicians reaching across the diaspora to find common ground. And the Financial Times, yes, the Financial Times, labelled In Search of a Lost Rhythm a lovely, sunny sound, all tinkling guitars and delicious variations of rhythm. Newsday wrote that Wrangling's fat, juicy notes on his electric guitar blend in perfectly with the acoustic accompaniment of the Senegalese musicians. The Observer noted that the music is filled with Wrangling's melodious warmth and easy good nature. And All Music wrote that the English bass and drum style gets all mixed up here with reggae and Afro pop, resulting in a scintillating dance party. So, from 1998, Ernie Wrangling had brought the Afro beat. <laughs> to the space. That's a beat that the young ones are all going crazy for now. But here we're talking about Afro pop. Um, 
Beautiful, beautiful. We um, just had Maurice uh, Gordon on the phone. Uh, he was playing uh, as we... Did you get a chance to hear him? Yeah, I was listening. Also. Yeah, I mean, wasn't that beautiful? It was nice. Um, how do, what did you think of it, um, uh, Uncle Ernie? Yeah. Um, Maurice was playing on, on the ear. Earth mm -hmm. to be alone. Maurice? Maurice? Yes. Maurice Gordon. We're just getting... He was, um, he was playing Earth to be alone on the guitar just now. <laughs> yes. so, so she's asking what you think about it. I didn't hear. Oh, oh he, 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 about, he yeah. didn't hear. But you heard. Yeah, man. Uh, what you thought about? Was it was it? very beautiful. Uh, come closer to the microphone. It was very beautiful. Yeah. Yes. As you know, Maurice is my teacher from. He, he told the, us. Yeah, so. <laughs> he told yeah, man, us. He's a man of, like just like Dean said, the Mister Rang now is on his guitar. Yes. Maurice is a straight guitar, you know. Yeah, he's very proud of you, Maurice. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have the same birthday, you know. Oh, you do. Yeah. When is that? August twenty third. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. see there, so you're in Ga the month of Mosiah, Garvey. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> so welcome to the space. Yes. All right, um, uh, you know, I'd, 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 let me ask um, Ernie about that project, In Search of the Rhythm. Yeah. Uh, tell us about that project and the work with Baba Mal and, and the Senegalese group. Yeah, well, um, I, they came, well, I used to be with... Um, do uh what's his name um the, the vocalist that that in 98 uh, um that i uh we used to travel with um so oh, jimmy cliff jimmy cliff mm. Mm -hmm. yes and yes. um so jimmy cliff you um had certain um connection with with those people yes yes and i they came to jamaica and this is how I managed to... Yes, <laughs> um, I remember when they came to Jamaica. Yes, yes. and then now, um, uh, I, after a certain um, albums that I've done, and I decided that I would really like to change, uh, you know, mm -hmm. make, a, make a, a little difference in... A different in, in, sound. So, yeah. yeah. So, I managed to... Well, I've been to that country before with Jimmy Cliff, you mm -hmm. know, so... That's Senegal. Senegal, yes. Yeah. So, I decided that I would like to make an album with them because um, I met the, the, some of the musicians and I was trying, really intrigued with their instruments that they use and so forth. Yes, and, yes. And um, so I, I, I eventually got the opportunity to go and meet me. But um, I didn't get to really go do fully what I wanted because some of those strange instruments... Those are the instruments that I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you wanted to play the street, the other instrument. <laughs> yeah, well, not even to play, but I would like to uh, do certain things. Um, uh, come uh, playing with them, you know. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, that, yes. Uh, but anyway. Um, uh, I, I accepted what I got. Uh, and I was really happy to do what I could do. And it turned out to be, and look at the review, the the international review was, was glowing, was all positive. <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, I read some of them a while ago. Let's just give a listen to just one of the random tracks. because yeah. um, let, Let's listen to this one from right. uh, In Search um, in search of the Rhythm. I'm track number six. You wanted me to play another one? Because we can't play anyone. Come on, anyone? anyone? Okay, my question number six. Yeah. All right. Yeah. To be truthful with you, I'm totally lost in the music. <laughs> uh -huh. And by the way, I got a, an award from a university in, in America. Yes, a doctorate. For I this saw that. Album. Oh, I saw that a doctorate. I saw that earlier. We we mentioned that earlier. It, yeah. It's deserving, you know. <laughs> I mean, this is this is just words uh, somebody else can find the words to help me to describe this and i see why they, yeah. they you know they talked about they, all the newspapers who wrote about it talk about how the music is filled with your melodious warmth 
and your easy good nature. And then I heard the other instruments that you were talking about. Yeah. Because there's one there that make it a... Yeah. That one, that, that music is straight from Africa, that it does something to your soul. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is from the continent. <laughs> if, you're not, if you're not pulled in by that, um, then... I don't know, you Nephilim <laughs> or shapeshifter. I, I just told him that your daughter play guitar and said, well, she, she have to come teach him now. Yeah. <laughs> she's learning, she's learning. <laughs> she's teaching herself from YouTube and her dad plays a guitar too. Yeah. So I can oh. just imagine that they're all listening in the house now. Yeah, yeah. yeah just trying to figure this out. But I, I, I yes, I'm, I'm, I'm putting her into space, you know. Definitely. Yes. And then, you know, I pose with my guitar all the time, so... Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is, it is, what a beautiful sound, what a beautiful music. Yeah. Um, so, so, so you actually went into, so what was the trip like? In, you've been to Senegal before. Yeah. And, and I like the sound of this because it talks about In Search of the Rhythm. Yeah. And, and you know, I read somewhere where um, Jimmy Cliff had said that just going into the continent of Africa and listening to the sounds, that it tells him where we get our sound from. Yeah. Um, do you agree with that? Um, In, do you agree that we get our so mm? sound? Do you agree that the sound? The that, sound, that, yes. Our sound is that like from, from Africa. Africa. Oh. For, from Africa. Well, yeah. um, to me, um, the, that side of the world is really an intriguing side. Yes. To to and I you know uh, if I had the opportunity, I would have been there much much all around those areas. Yes. Because yes. what I was, what I became interested in in those days, I can't know because I'm a little too young to do it now. <laughs> yes. But um, I wanted to to do Chinese music. Yes. I've been to Japan. Yes. But uh, I would really like to do, you know, like Chinese, African, but, so but you, all those kind of, um, mm -hmm. like, uh, what, uh, um, you know, what, what you call it again, um, the nature, um, people's culture, yes. cultural music, yes. you know. And it's interesting you say that because... All those Eastern sounds, they're so similar. Like, yeah. you know, you've got Japan, yeah. um, China, Korea, Ethiopia, right. Right. Um, you know, North, North Africa. They, 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 there's, there's a similar kind of sound running yeah. through all of that yeah. music. And it, um, but, but you've done so much, Uncle Ernie, in, in, <laughs> in capturing so much of the music. Yeah. <laughs> You, you brought it all home, man. You brought it all home. Uh, <laughs> it, was there a favorite... Um, I know it's a corny question, but was there a favorite um, album that you worked on or a favorite song of yours from your own music, um, yeah. from your own collection? Yeah. Now, there's another country, too, that um, I almost um, had the opportunity to, to, to do it, but I'd... I'd, I'd, I'd Something happened. I don't remember what was, uh, but it's um when I went to where is it now? To, to uh, behind France there. Uh, um, okay, so France. that's not um those um so, Greek. Is it Greek? Oh, it's Greece. Yes. And, okay. And mm -hmm. because yes, they, they started to to they were interested in my reggae music mm. so this was what I was going to be, you know um, I guess I would have done some yeah. reggae and Greek music <laughs> and so forth and but that would make a lot of sense yeah. I didn't get the chance yeah. again you know so and yeah. what really one of the things that stopped me a lot too is uh, since this um, um war oh. well oh the, the this um the, the, what do you call it the disease the the disease covid covid yeah? covid covid yes yes see, yes now I couldn't get to go to certain countries and mm -hmm, mm -hmm, everything mm -hmm. just 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> but 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 you you still and I understand how that would have affected um, the tour and the traveling. And they're saying you have to be vaccinated to travel to a lot of those places too. So mm-hmm. we have to be careful of our health. But at the same time, um, you 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 you're still um, in the studio. You're still rehearsing. You're still performing. Yeah, in my show, my show on the fourth yeah. in Kingston. Tell us where you want to tell us about um, oh, Let me take a quick break and you yes. come back and tell us about that show. With you inside of the Africa Forum, um, it is my great pleasure. We have been welcoming to the studio all morning. We're very happy to have Dr. the Honorable Ernest Wrangling in the studio. Uh, his music is a soundtrack of our lives. And, you know, we heard earlier from, uh, from Maurice Gordon talking about how... Um, you really, when you think about the music of Ernie, you're, you're thinking about, you're talking about music that permeates every single time, moment, and aspect, element of Jamaican music, and even before that, so that there is no writing the story of Jamaican music, or talking about the story, or celebrating the story without Ernie Wrangling. If you're doing that, to put it, is an understatement, really, when Herbie Miller said, it is flawed. It's all flawed. Vanity of vanity, said the preacher. All is vanity. Without Ernie. So, uh, Ernie Wrangling is still is performing. He's in the studio um, recording. And there's a show coming up. And Dale, you were telling us about that show. Yeah, the show is called Bring Back the Love. Part 2. He played there last year. Yes. And, you know... Um, and um, they keep it this, keeping it this year again, and they wanted him to come back this year. So wow. um, the show is with um, Mr. Wrangling mm-hmm. and Pamal, mm-hmm. and then um, the Fab Five band. Okay, yeah. so it's Fab Five, Pam Hall, and Ernest, and, er, and Ernest Wrangling. Where, where is this going to be? Um, at the Courtly Auditorium. Courtly. On, um, March the 4th. March 4. What day is that? It's a Saturday. Thank God, because I was hoping it would, you know what I'm saying, let it not be a Sunday so I can't <laughs> yeah. go. So March 4, yes. let us write that down um, and, and, and let us head to the courtly auditorium, make a pack you out, and, and listen to Ernie Wrangling, mm-hmm. Ernest Wrangling, um, bringing back the love yes. uh, in performance. So in terms of... Uh, I, I spoke to you the other day. You were on your way, um, Dale, to rehearsals yes. and and rehearsing with Ernie Wrangling and so. So, mm-hmm. so, so Ernie's still rehearsing. Ernie don't need to rehearse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want to practice up, man? Even we were, we were practicing yesterday as well. So, Uncle Ernie, you still rehearse? She said, "You still rehearse. You still mm-hmm. practice." If you still, oh yes. Um, uh, this guy, is, he teaches me. <laughs> <laughs> That's, daily. So we, we, That's daily talking. We, we practice, um, we like, get a little practice on the, on the program yes. that we are going to do, that we at least will be quite... Um, Familiar. Uh, 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 are we here? Uh, uh, yes. Um, uh, cohesive when you perform. Yes, we get, yes. will be quite... Um, well, to say, a uh, uh, weird, not, I wouldn't say really? a weird, but um, we, we would be quite um, knowledgeable of what we're going to do. You know, know and this is, this is also a, a where I have to take a pause, because here's Ernie Wrangling, who's been, been performing from 1940s, 1950s, <laughs> and um, has a pop, recorded um, many, many songs and um, released many, many albums, and you're hearing perfection. And uh, here is Ernie Wrangling, born 1947, who has a show. And hear what he's telling us. We have uh, to rehearse. We have to practice so that we're knowledgeable of what we're going to do when we all go on stage. Now, with this, it, listen, this is it. <laughs> and this is what I think we are losing generally. Um, I've seen too many shows where it's obvious that all you did was to send a CD to the band mm-hmm. and then come try fix it in with you. Mm-hmm. And, and, and Ernie, could, <laughs> Ernie could have done that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, um, but, 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 but he doesn't. Why is it imp- why so important, Dale, for, 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 for that, for Ernie to rehearse? And you are there as a son ensuring mm-hmm. that he reaches to the rehearsal. Um, just to make sure everything go on one accord because in, he, he's worried about sometimes the musicians who are playing. 
And you know, with that now, he's comfortable now because we have Desi Jones and drums. Yes. And Desi is the organizer of the music for this show. So we, yes. we, we're going to have one rehearsal in Kingston. So yes. we, that's why I'm, in Ochi you now, me and him just mm-hmm. like, meet once a week. Yes. Just to ensure that we're on yes. you know, the same page. Good morning, Desi Jones. And once again, um, good morning. Uh, Dean said it earlier, and we've had more than, I think Maurice mentioned, um, Mrs. Ernie Wrangling. Yeah, my name who, who We want to say good morning um, to Mrs. Wrangling. Mm-hmm. How long you've been married, uh, Uncle Ernie? How long mm-hmm. you been married to Miss Randy? Mm-hmm. How long you married to Miss Randy? How long what? <laughs> you married to Miss Randy? He probably not going to answer me on that. How long? How long ago you married? It, it, how oh, long? You get married. You get oh, oh, <laughs> the marriage. <laughs> <laughs> well, sounds like just yesterday. Oh, <laughs> Mrs. Wagner, but, yes. <laughs> but um, we, 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 we are now 54 years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What an example all around. Congratulations thank and thank you, you for much. showing us. Thank you for showing us <laughs> yes. how to do it, um, how to behave, how to be um, professional, um, how to be with our partners. Um, your life is an example to, 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 to all of Jamaica. And I thank you so much uh, for that. Um, I know we're going back and forth, but I know somebody just texted in to say, Ask you about your work with Millie Small and my my boy Lollipop. We're past oh. it already, but we're going to jump back there because somebody's asking about it. Oh, oh. <laughs> those long days. Yeah. <laughs> long time. Um, yes. Yeah. Well, Millie. Um, well, yes. Um, I, I, I didn't do anything with her in Jamaica, mm-hmm. I, I think. But... Um, we went to England. Mm-hmm. That's where I first. Um, I know that she used to be um, long. I think there's maybe one of the time when I wasn't at um, um, Cecil Dad. Oh, um, yes, yes, yes. I yes. think she she did something there with um, with some artists, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but. Um, the, 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 those things, she, when she went to England, I finished those albums mm-hmm, up mm-hmm, there. Mm-hmm. And that's when she got her, my boy, Lollipop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, once again, my apologies that we're not playing some of the songs, but um, look them up and play them, man, and dance. Um, you know, Ernie, you have, um, Uncle Ernie, you have, uh, we, we've been talking about it all morning, you've been involved and not just involved but you have defined every period of Jamaica's music because yeah. of a, a, a lot of people don't understand this but you have arranged you are the arranger you arrange a lot of the music that people don't even stop to think that who yeah. arranged that that was you yeah. and that is uh, so so we said earlier you're coming from mentor and 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 <coughs> um, and ska yeah. and um rock steady and and and, and yes, we, you know all of it I've been around. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you have seen the changes in the music. Um, what do you think about where the music is at now? Well, um, uh, I'm getting pretty young. And it's like I keep trying to um, encourage my brother musicians that you're looking at a young man. Yes. So, it's time for you guys to take over. Yes. Because um, I, they are young, and therefore they could have much um, early, much younger experiences mm-hmm. now that this this the, the times. Because the times change, you know, mm-hmm. and it, mm-hmm. uh, I could be playing a, a, a certain type of music within a certain era. Yes. And now the era look like we don't know what is the next change. Yes. And oh. it may be it, it may be early. What oh. we need to but we need to have guys who can manage, you know, the change. Th- this this change. And yeah. and to keep it because you don't want to, to to let the country stay in one position. 
you want mm-hmm. it, it, it's progress we are thinking mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. so therefore we need people now who can take over yes. and b- put the thing further yes that, and you say manage that process yes and uh, 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 isn't this very important uh, because you were there all along, um, that Sunday meeting in 1959 or, or 60, that, that Cox and Dodd call, that was to manage the change. Yeah. Um, that, that was um, people who were together, serious musicians who knew that the change was coming, it needed to come, but it was, the process was managed. Yeah. And along the way, as an arranger, even with the young whalers, you were managing that process and much later on. Yeah. And what you're saying now is that um, the, the process needs continuity. We need to see um, the younger ones coming forward to manage it, or yeah. else it's going to be chaos. Yeah, because we want to keep our country at a certain um, position. Yes. You know, we yes. don't want to fall down. We want to uh, rise, uh, yes. keep rising. Yes. And um, progress yes. is the key. Yes. And... Um, uh, okay, uh, maybe I was lucky to 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 manage certain area, right. but it would be nice if somebody could come around and take over and make it uh, keep keep it going keep and it, keep it the standard high, the do. standard higher and higher and mm-hmm. higher, and mm-hmm. that is what I'm hoping for my country. Wow, I mean that is such a phenomenal statement and a point of view from Dr. the Honorable Ernest Ernie Wrangling because there's been because Dale we've had a lot of conversations about this you know <laughs> about where the music is going and there's a lot of loud talking and a lot of seminars and a lot of you know um, just uh, we, have a, we had a, a music conference the other day and so on but the idea is very simple and you can always depend on Uncle Ernie to simplify mm-hmm. that which we have made so complicated definitely manage the change mm-hmm. because yeah. I remember playing with Ernie you know, when you hear the word the name Ernie Young people normally think um, jazz mm. but whenever we're on stage they say come dance hall me play now yes <laughs> so, you play the song and say come give me the dance hall yes. the, the <laughs> yeah man right. The, oh goodness! Um, I, I know you have to go, you know, and mm-hmm. I know um, I'm pressuring you to stay over time. But I think that um, I, I, it, thank you. Mm-hmm. I want to thank you so much. Definitely. I want to thank you, Dale, for making it possible mm-hmm. that one call yeah, man. has led to this. Yes. Um, I want to thank you so much, Uncle Ernie. Oh. We talked a few years ago about the, mu- the guitar music festival. I'm so sorry I wasn't able to pull it off. Well, the pleasure you know. is all mine. Yes, thank you, you so know. much. And um, it's great to be here, too, but uh, especially in your, on your program. Ah, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Yes. yes, and you may be the only person who can get me on your program. Oh. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Beg a ball again for different reasons. <laughs> Beg a, oh, goodness gracious. Oh, boy. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Uncle Ernie. Yeah. Mm, wow. Uh, the, the love is deep that I feel for you, Uncle Ernie. The love yeah. is deep. Thank you. And, thank you. and for the work. And, and, you know, just to say... Uh, in our hearts, you remain Uncle Ernie. I know your pops um, to, to yeah. Dean and, and them, right? And, and this is your son beside you. Yeah. So you see, you are our uncle, you are father, and, and you have set a standard that mm-hmm. the only thing we can do, we betray ourselves, not you, we betray ourselves if we do not walk in your footsteps <laughs> and continue what you have done. Well. I am one of the guys who maybe tried it. So therefore, I hope somebody will come and try even harder. Yes. And be much more successful. And then I can sit down and even... I don't know how... uh, I'm I'm really a young man. Yes. So I don't know how long I'll be able to admire what is going on. But I hope I'll be... Uh, for the length of time that I have to be around, I'm hoping that I'll be quite impressed. Yes. Let's put it that way. 
<laughs> and we hope that we do not disappoint you. It should be <laughs> our commitment not to disappoint. Uh, Uncle Ernie, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you so much. Um, Dale, thank Come you, on, my listen. brother. Um, he invented the music. He didn't invent the word, but yes. he invented the music. Yes. Dr. The Honorable Ernest yes. Wranglin, the man, the music, the legend, the icon. Thank you so much. God bless. Mm-hmm.